Want to get something off your chest? Interact with us in the live chat and WhatsApp us your messages on 0747 649 7166. This is The Black and White Show. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? Is Ari? Welcome to another week's edition of The Black and White Show. Have we got a packed out show for you, Slot? We are live on YouTube and we are live on Facebook. Thank you very much for joining us. I have Sam and Kyle with us. First of all, Sam, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. First week back at work in the can. And uh, yeah, it's all good. Still no baby, though. No, how I do not know, but no. Call down for car and take the rest away. What will arrive first, the child or the can? <laughs> Who knows? What to be the same day? It's coming. It's inevitable. And how are you, Kyle? <laughs> Long I'm not doing. Too, I, I'm not doing too bad, mate. I've noticed that the whiteboard's behind you. The famous whiteboard. OG Newcastle fans TV uh, followers will know exactly what the whiteboard is. <laughs> it's got a yeah, it's got a bit of love of recently. You can watch up us perfect. Sam is controlling this week. Uh, you can watch up us on 0747-649-7166. It's the only way that you'll guarantee have your messages read out. So coming up to, on tonight's show in the first section, which is now we're going to be talking about the lads coming back. Everything from training to possibly injuries, playing behind closed doors. Later on in the second section, it's a bit of a mix of all sorts. We're talking about the Black Lives Matter campaign, season ticket money, a little bit on the takeover, but it's gone a little bit quiet, so I don't think we'll be delving, delving sorry, into that as much. And then in the third section, Johnny takes over and I'll be on the controls and he's discussing everything to deal with contracts from Matty Longstaff to players who are currently on loan, have a month extension and a couple of free agents as well. And of course, keep the live chat coming. Please do. Uh, we'll be reading some of them out during the show. So let's crack on with it. Sam, a summer of football. We didn't expect that, mind. Every single game live. Are you happy about that? Yes, because it's been so long. I mean, I know you've been obsessing over the Bundesliga over the past couple of weeks, but I, I can't, it doesn't really do much for me. So th what's going to start on the 17th, it's just going to be heaven for the next month or six weeks or so. I cannot wait. It's finally, this time next week we'll be, I'm guessing we'll be previewing Sheffield United at home. So all of a sudden football is back. Yeah, we'll come at that. Are you happy about with Kyle? Like you can watch every single Premier League game. Buzzing. I mean, it's uh, it's been a long time coming, hasn't it? I mean, it, we've been in lockdown for what feels like the last twenty five years. And yes, Johnny, I am borrowing your Wi Fi, so sort it out, mate. <laughs> so if I am bl blurry or lag out or anything, I do apologise in advance. But um, no, I feel uh, I feel happy that the football is coming back. We all seem to be struggling in isolation and it's like it's just when are the days going to end they get slower and slower and it's, it's nothing to do the takeover news has run its course at the minute so it's nothing keep me entertained unless you work or don't i'm a student so the days are longer and uh yeah i'm looking forward to the football coming back i can't wait for it to, even the first game back aston villa sheffield united can't wait it's going to be like el classico in my sitting room trust me <laughs> come on sheffield united uh, they've just seen a comment there by Andrew Young. Already the shirts have been mentioned, of course, between Sam and Kyle. Sam's got a bit of love, but Kyle is representing the Sir Bobby Robson era as I well. I am, yes. So what is Which your favourite? would help if people could see it clearly. It would help. Please let us know what is your favourite. So um, the lads have actually been in contact training now. When I say the lads, the two lads have been in contact training for over a week and have switched to St. James's Park, probably to get a good feel of playing in an empty stadium. And, of course, Kyle, we're not going to be there. It's going to be look a bit strange, isn't it? Because, obviously, we've seen the training match that happened, and now we're going to say football matches played in an empty stadium. It's it's going to be strange across the board because you're used to going home and away. You've been every home and away game this season for Newcastle, so you're just not going to... You're not going to know yourself watching from, watching from your sitting room or whatever, but... The, this channel will always, even if it looks strange for a couple of weeks and we're being in the sitting room or, or going outside or going outside the ground or what or whatever it may be, it will still be able to bring that. But it, it is going to be strange for the first couple of weeks because 
there's going to be no Raw of the Crowd. There's going to be none of that. It's a, it's going to be very strange. But as you've said about the Bundesliga League, the football takes centre stage eventually and people will get used to it. It is going to be feel a bit strange with it. But at the end of the day, Sam, we've got some football. And probably six weeks ago, we were worrying that we wouldn't have any football and that the season may be void. Yeah, that's the main thing. It's not ideal, but... The season, all the outstanding issues, the FA Cup, which is the only real thing that's keeping our season going, it's all going to get resolved. It's not ideal, of course, it's not. You're going to save a lot of money on fuel, Lee, so that's kind of a good thing. I'm going to save a lot of money on fuel too, because I had um, a fair few tickets and hotels booked, as you well know. So it, it, it's not ideal, but... We've got to make the best of it. I mean, we can always order cardboard cutouts, can't we? <laughs> That's a question for later, actually. Kyle, what do you make of uh, five substitutions over a, a period of the game where you can do it three times? A good thing or a bad thing? I mean, there's a couple of times this season where we could have done with it when we've been shite and needed um, a couple of subs at half time. But um, no, it, 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 I suppose it's a good thing. Um, over, over three points in the game, so it avoids time wasting, which is fairly ahead of the curve, but made by the by the Premier League to to put that in place. But yeah, I think it's a it's a good chance for everybody to get involved because you would do know it, lack of fitness and things that it is going to be a thing early doors. So so yeah, it, it makes perfect sense to have five substitutions definitely. So uh, yeah, it's going to help us more than a lot of teams, I think. It is a good point. There's going to be a game, effectively, Sam, every three ga- three days from now until the rest of the season. And obviously, we'll talk about injuries in just a moment from uh, the Dr. Paul Catterson. But Chris Nacho might get a fair, fair uh, run out now, uh, Sam. So are you, are you happy about that? What about the free subs, please? Yeah, I mean, when managers moan about the Christmas schedule, that's going to make it look you know, lackadaisical compared to what's about to hit them. But everyone knows the situation. Um, you know, it, it's it, it's one of them. It, it's got to be done. It's got to be played. This is, We're going to feel the after effects of this for probably up until the next World Cup. Let's let's face it. This is a massive deal that's, going to, uh, that's completely snowballed. But, um, yeah, there's going to be plenty of squad rotation, which is all the more important that these contract extensions get sorted. Indeed. Right, we've got a clip from Alan St. Maximum, who was doing a few interviews the last few days, and this is what he said. With the lockdown, uh, my kids didn't go in school, and me, I stay at home, and I don't go play uh, and do my job. That's why I have really the time for take care of my kids uh, and stay all the day and like two months only with my kids, and this is really good, really important. I'm I'm really proud because uh, the supporter give me give me a great opportunity for feel really good in Newcastle and uh, if I can give uh, a power to the supporter or even for myself to take a beautiful kit uh, kit uh, when I stay uh, in my house it's good because I feel comfortable and I sleep with this that's why. Uh, it's good for me. It's a good kid, and it's good for everything. I try to, I try to be it. What's happened uh, in my life? What I do? Uh, when I run, uh, I, I put a lot of video about my family, for they can, they can feel. Or you know, sometimes the people like to don't like to look only the football. You know, they like to see what's happened uh, outside. If you have some kids, what you do in your life. And you know they feel like they are more, you know, you have like a relation, you know, and uh, this is important for me because uh, sometimes you can feel good, sometimes you can feel bad, sometimes you have some problem, and for everyone uh, it's the same. But the family, it's really important, and the time you take with your kids or with your parents or with everything, it's really important time. That's why. Uh, I feel like the feeling uh, and the power give me the supporter. If I can give uh, back some things to the supporter or put some 
some video or put some some things in Twitter or talk a little bit with the supporter or score some goal or uh, everything. It's it's great for me. And that was Alan St. Maximum. And of course, he has been keeping us entertained, in particular on Instagram with his everyday life with his kids and stuff. But I want to talk a little bit on positive and negative about possibly no crowd being there. Um, Kyle, do you think Alan St. Maximum, because he's the type of player that gets the crowd going, do you think with him not having the crowd cheering him on and you know everybody roaring when he gets onto the ball, do you think he'll he'll suffer from that or do you think he'll just push it off? I think it'd be I think it'd be all right, mate, because he's gained a reputation from having a playing style of effectively playing in playing in the park. And with his skill and things like that, I don't think it'll be much of an effect, uh, to be honest, because with how pacey direct he is, um, I know he feeds off the crowd a lot and he's the way the way he plays football, but that being said, I, I still think he'll be one of the key players for the remaining nine games. I don't think it'll affect him too much. Perfectly done, Sam. So check out our fantastic membership programs, Facebook, where we upload uh, videos. I know Kyle's done a couple of the last two days. Um, Sam, Paul's I more more um, so please come over to a Facebook private group where you get more and more Newcastle content. And of course, if you're on YouTube now, uh, you can have a look at the join button that tells you everything about it. So please have a look at that. And also our other sponsors as well. Um, Amazon, BR52 and 3 Retro. There's some fantastic stuff there. We've even made some adverts for you. So stay tuned for them later on in the show. Yeah, you would love it. Sam's a natural lad, so do keep an eye on them coming later in the show. But going to switch back to Joe Linton. Uh, Sam, he was talking earlier on in the week, if you can get that up on screen for everyone and see, he was talking that he still feels confident that he can carry the number nine shirt and be the man at Newcastle. Scored, of course, on the training, the training match. However, I've seen a few things on Twitter where people are saying without him having a crowd on the back of them, he'll flourish. Do you feel he, he'll he benefit from only having two or three hundred, two or what, 200, 300 people in the stadium? Um, yeah, I, I, I really do. Um, it's got to be pretty hard for the lad to, you know, have a groan of, an audible groan of 50,000 people when you spur a chance or do something wrong. It's so clear to me he's a confidence player as well. So clear. After he got uh, a goal or two under his belt in the FA Cup replays, the next game after that, especially in the first half, I remember that header um, just over the bar or hit the bar or the keeper saved it against Chelsea. Um, that first half, he looked really sharp and on his toes and interested. And then he gets wore down again. I think without the crowd getting on his back and not, maybe not being the most supportive of him, it can only help him because I think there is a player in there somewhere. It may not be a number nine, um, but there is definitely something about him. Oh, so get your WhatsApp coming in. We're going to read them out in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Um, you can drop us and we'll read them out so you keep your live chat as well. Uh, the number which you'll see on screen, which is 0747 649 7166. If you're not in the UK, you can still WhatsApp us. It is completely for free. So we'll be reading them out in about 10, 15 minutes. But please keep your comments coming and they will keep appearing on screen in the live chat. Right. Um, Club Doctor. Uh, Paul Catterson has spoken a couple of times uh, this week, claiming that injuries will happen with Newcastle. And this is what he said earlier on in the week. Yeah, so first, we are expecting more injuries in this time. And there's been a few other examples. There was an NFL lockout a number of years ago uh, for a period of time, and they got a lot of Achilles tendon injuries after that. So we've been quite looking at the calves and the players. But going back to the question, I think... It, yeah, they'll see us. We might have to run on in personal protective equipment or masks to actually treat them at, um, um, at, at the time. But we are fully expecting this increase in injuries. I mean, they've been running on treadmills and working indoors for eight weeks now. And that transition from doing that to going to the football environment and the pitch is very different. It's a different stimulus to the body and they get different type of injuries. So it's just the body learning and trying to give them time to adapt to that what we've had to do is basically just give the players the ice to take home, put their own bath at home, like we used to do sort of 10, 15 years ago when we used to get to hotels. 
But no, we're not allowed to do that, um, unfortunately. There's quite a lot of um, policies and procedures, and that is unfortunately, given the current heat, um, one of the difficult ones for us. So that was Paul Catson speaking to the BBC earlier on the week about that it's likely that we will have injuries. But um, when I compare that to the Bundesliga the last three weeks, there hasn't been many injuries. So hopefully that is the case. Of course, we want that Premier League rule to change. Paul Dummett is now back fit. Obviously, with Danny Rose, is he on form? Is he not? It might be another good option to have Paul Dummett. Uh, Sam, if you can whack that on screen. Um, Dummett's desperate to get in the 25-man squad. But also, we've got Andy Carroll back as well. Kyle, would you like to say that rule changed because of the potential of injuries? I think they've got to. I mean, if they've got five substitutions per game, you know, and, and bigger squads for match day weekend as well, I think they've raised it to, what, 20, 21? I think they've got to have more than um, 25 for a man squad, especially when injuries do kick in and, and the will. And usually Newcastle end up on the, on the back foot on the injury front. So... Um, it's something I would like to see uh, at least put the 30 players and plus it gives it, if anything it gives a chance for a couple of young youngins to get a, get a chance as well so I know you go on a lot about the under 20 Friesley, perfect chance for them no pressure, no fans around the stadium they're used to that with the under 23 set up not many fans go so it's a, it's a perfect chance to, to see what they can do at, at the top level so why not? Yeah. yeah, I would agree but the, the problem that we've got with the kids Sam is that the under-23s, if there is a bit of a, an injury crisis, they haven't kicked a ball for two and a half months. They're not in training. They're sitting at home playing FIFA videos and stuff. Yeah, I mean, the thing with that is they're going to be looking more too. I mean, don't forget as well, the likes of Rolando Aarons are back. Lazar, but, you know, less about him. The more, there's more of a point about, you know, Aarons. So what are the club going to do if... Mankio goes, if Danny Rose's loan doesn't get extended, if Bentaleb's loan doesn't get extended, if Matty goes, all of a sudden you've got space for the likes of Aaron's and Lazar. Mm. But you'd like to think like Dummett would get the, the left-back position that he used to have um, should Rose leave. But, yeah, I don't think this is a real time to be bedding in the the under twenty threes that that's that's for next preseason I think that your little one there shouting in the background there Sam <laughs> I don't know My I don't Mike know. is good you pick that up he's two two rooms away it's, it's approaching <laughs> bed well, it's approaching the start of the bedtime routine so yes there's every chance there's, there's I, I, I miss Sam. Sure. he might be coming back you never know hardly no stop. yes <laughs> hey, he yeah. be back on Saturday. You could, no, you no could, way. You could have him back. You know, just do. Yeah. You want? Um, you want me to play a championship football next season? Is that what's wrong? Well, one more win, I think we're there. But um, that leaves me nicely yeah. on a bit of um comedy uh thing at the moment. Is that what on Saturday? No, the cardboard cutouts. Oh, um, yes. Sam, get that photo up for us, please. Um, it, it looks all right on the eye, but Kyle, are you in favour of it? If it if the money gets donated to the food bank. Card, if it goes to the food bank, then yes, because it's got a fantastic purpose. But I mean, I'm not keen on it. it, it, it nah, it just it just looks mad because it's not not going to make any noise, is it? It's just going to be it's going to be cardboard cutouts. I'm not a fan of it personally. But if the purpose is for it all to go to the food bank and local charities and things that are, I'm all for it. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of uh, cardboard cutouts, because then there's a there's a good reason to to have that involved. Well, yeah. you I mean, I'm just just the thought of cardboard cut cardboard cutouts. It's, 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 I thought you were laughing at me Wi-Fi again. <laughs> no, it's just the cardboard cutouts at St James Park. I mean, it's what have we came to? I know there's a pandemic. Don't get me wrong, but Sam, what do you make of the um, the noise that's going to be pumped in? Are you a fan of that? Um, pays your money and takes your choice. I won't be. I won't be putting it on. Um, doesn't really make a difference to me and to be honest i'd quite like i quite like the idea of getting more of a sense of um what the manager's shouting at what the players are saying to each other i want to i want to hear them kind of things it's not very often you get to you get to hear that so that's i, I kind of i'm kind of looking forward to be able to hear in that kind of interest in, intricacy about it but i don't really mind the cardboard cutout idea i don't dislike it 
I might get one. If the, if all the money is going to the food bank, like they say it is, I, I, I think it's a great idea. But, I, you know. Where would you put yourself? Uh, uh, I would. You want to be behind the goal on camera, don't you? No, I would be. Uh, I want to be in the seat where Matt Ritchie kicked the corner flag where it hit the guy. No one wants to sit there, bud. <laughs> it's dangerous territory. <laughs> it's all going to be exactly. East Stand, isn't it? It's all the East Stand that'll get seen. Oh, to is it? Yeah. Out there. Jane, a lantern noise is better than silence. The Equin Bundesliga games, which is strange. Yeah, I've watched a couple of them and it's um it's all right, but I, I was laughing yesterday. I was watching the Bundesliga because the referee was getting booing whistles. And there's nobody in the stadium. But anyway, that, that's, that's had me chuckling as well. Uh, five more minutes and we'll read out your WhatsApp, so please get them firing across. You can see the number ticking along the bottom, so please fire us a few messages. Um, but the last one I want to talk about is how good is it, Kyle, that we'll be talking about football next week? I mean... It'll it'll be good because um, we're going. For, I mean, we've been struggling for for stuff for the radio show, as you know, mate. And it, we're going to go from struggling to 110 miles an hour straight off because there's three games in the first week for us, isn't there? I, I think we've got three games in a week coming up, so it's going to be nice to just talk about football again, not take over, not fake over, not cardboard cutouts or whatnot. Just just <laughs> talk about the football. Just talk about the football again. That's what that's kind of what we're here for. We've been we've done we've done a fantastic job in trying to fill the gap of time uh, in isolation, but it's time to talk about what matters and that's uh, that's the football. And that's a lovely uh, comment um by Thomas. Um Sam tell us a little bit more about that. What does he mean by that 349? 349 just all the bonus content for the uh, on the Facebook private group you get to see more of us and that's a good thing in a, in a way i have see more of our ugly mugs um just you get a behind the scenes look of what we're up to um you get exclusives so whoever we've got coming up on the channel um for example all the great interviews we've had during lockdown the news of them get broke on there and um you can tell me more about the uh, youtube memberships lee Andy, um, uh, what to just before and you get to see sam in sunglasses in his car that, that that's that's content <laughs> uh, ten or a month sold what well, onto the memberships though nah, oh, yeah. they are, if you want if you want more stuff out of us you can do as well i've just checked whatsapp we've only got a couple of messages i'm going to wait for them i'll hold on for them um sam get that number back up on screen send your whatsapp messages coming through and that's the we'll read them out 0747-649-7166 and what we'll do instead is we'll just read out a few of your live chat before we go to the uh, ad break so fire in your questions sam get some get some live chat up here we go. Hmm. Oh, lovely one, this. Hang on. Noah, That's if if the, if the takeover comes, the hat will come off. We've got <laughs> hat coming off. We've got Sam driving up to Sir Bobby Robson statue, and we've got Paul running down Northumberland Street with his packer out. So, Thomas, stay tuned because we will have a night for you. People aren't going to want it to happen now. <laughs> I mean, I, I love Paul to death, but I mean, that's not a sight we we'll want to see. What's I mean, your, Kerry, what's mate, but what's mine? Yeah, uh, what's your forfeit? <laughs> I'm a forfeit, mate. I'll just, I'll just be, I'll be in for the ride, mate. But not a. Uh, I mean, Paul, uh, as as we know, but Paul's uh, very much a, a great mate of mine. But um, running down Northumberland Street um, in certain in certain ways, I, 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 I wouldn't want it, mate. I'm not going to lie to you. Good um, question there about Elias Sonson in the chat there just before is, would you give him a chance because he's a because effectively if the, if the squad does get stretched, but um, is a case of not match fitness is it Sam? That and I don't think he'd really fit into our system at the moment. If you can stick him up front on his own, it's it's going to be um, he's going to be. Let, I don't think it'll help him at all. It's probably going to set him back if anything. I mean his season has just been an absolute mess from start to finish. Uh, he needs a real good loan move next season to get some games under his belt, because otherwise his development is completely stagnated. 
Cool. Right. What we'll do is we'll have an early break. We'll extend the second section. And have we got a lovely ad for you? We'll be back in a few minutes time. You're watching the Black and White Show with Newcastle Fans TV. I'm here, joined by Lee and Owen, and we're going to discuss our new sponsor for Newcastle Fans TV, Beer 52. What have you got there, Owen? It is a box full of beer from our sponsors, Beer 52. Amazing, amazing quality stuff. And um, how did you go about getting such marvellous well, beer? I just visited the link that we have in our description. It's called uh, beer52.com forward slash nftv just sign up five pound 95 for a box full of beer what more could you want great for cans now it's the largest uh, beer tasting club if you like lee what uh, what are you drinking there so i've had just the one so far but my box arrived yesterday um the first thing i noticed about it was all the colorful cans i was like ooh. i was uh, opening all these up and i've got one called puffin tears and it uh, comes from Cornwall IPA, 5%, which is a nice rounded figure for a nice beer. White and green is that one. So I've tasted that one. I can't wait to tuck into the others. But I do need to keep some, Sam, for takeover. I'm, tr I've, I'm trying to hold on. I'm tr really, really, really am. What better way to get ready for hashtag cans than visiting beer52.com forward slash NFTV? Although I don't think it'll hurt to crack one open now i've gone for the tiny rebel lazy boy lager 4.3 so it's a session session lager let's give it a go oh and what else have you got there in your inside your uh, beer 52 package well i've got a magazine called ferment do you get the pun um yeah brilliant brilliant little magazine read through you can find out all sorts in here um like beer creation fantastic also, just before I whip out one of my cans, it's got the Two Tribes Electric Circus American Pale Ale, only 4.7%. So, obviously, if you don't want to get too drunk, just have one of those, chill out, relax in the sun, and enjoy hashtag cans. Absolutely. Lee, what better way to get yourself ready for cans than have beer arriving on your door every month? Especially with the pubs on, uh, open at the moment, so you can have beer delivered to your front door, which is mint. You can also use your cans whenever you want. You can use it if you're going to watch Newcastle because you can't attend the games. You can watch them behind closed doors. And the great thing about it, what I like about it, it's not a contract. You can cancel your subscription whenever you like. You certainly can. Join the nation's biggest beer tasting club at beer52.com forward slash NFTV. Broadcasting live across YouTube and across Newcastle Fans TV's social media, this is the Black and White Show. Welcome back, everybody, and we are joined by Mr. Rob Spiral. How are you doing, Rob? Hello. Yeah, I'm all right. How are you? Not bad. You sound much more lou louder this week. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, good, good. Right. Yeah, change of earphones. Ah, so you sound much more louder. Brilliant. Right. What's, what, what we'll do is we shall have a little look at what you have been saying in the WhatsApp. I'll read some out now that more have came through. Um, an unknown says, do you think Joe Linton will play better behind closed doors without all the pressure of the fans? Rob, you haven't answered that. Yeah, I think that's... I think when it comes to certain players, each will have a certain preference as to whether they thrive off the presence of the crowd Others often get a bit uh, fe the feeling of being overwhelmed in front of such a large crowd, and we are known for being for creating such an intimidating atmosphere at St James's Park. So, yeah, I can see certainly Joe Linton stepping it up a gear during this time of uh, no fans in the stadium. If you were Matty Longstaff, would you stay or go? Personally, I would never leave under Cashley. That's from an unknown Sam. It's so difficult for a young English pro these days. You see the influx of talent now going abroad, which was unheard of uh, 10, 15 years ago. But you see the likes of Sancho at Dortmund. <sighs> Money turns heads. I mean, it, I, I honestly think he might be at Watford next season on loan with them paying all of the, his wages. I hope to God I'm wrong. If it was me, obviously I would choose to stay, especially with the takeover, you know, imminent our new least favorite word but i don't know i've just got a horrible feeling about it, it it's it's literally 
three weeks, more or less, and his contract's done, up, finished. So uh, the longer it goes on, we've been talking about this since, what, October? I think it's still not been still sorted. Still yeah, um, we're talking more about Matty Longstaff in Section 3 with Johnny, so stay tuned for that. Uh, hi, lads. Could you give us your three ratings numerically on the feelings of chance of the take will happen, i.e. 50-50? Reassure me, please. And that's from Mike. I hope that's not Mike Ashley. Um, I'll probably say 70-75%. Sam? Uh, 70 to 75 percent sam i am 90, but I was 95. Wow. And where are you at the moment, yeah. Rob? Yeah, more or less the same area. I, 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 I'd be very, very surprised if it doesn't go through eventually. I think it's just a case that I, I still believe it is just a case of when rather than if. Okay. So we're all still optimistic, so hopefully that uh, gives you reassurance, mate. Another one, this is from Gary from uh, Black Hole, says, well, do you all think a few footballers will actually be a better person without any interruptions to surprise the crowd to be allowed in? than to watch them on TV. So what do you think, guys? Plus, I strongly believe the takeover will happen for a better future. Um, kind of touch upon that a little bit already, Gary. I think um, in terms of feeling, I still think footballers want fans inside the ground. Um, I really, really do. And I think that'll always be that way. An empty stadium is going to feel a little bit strange. Uh, Will's um, giving you a lot of love there, Sam. He loves the top. Best, oh, best. thank you. Best top we've ever did, apparently. And unknown mm -hmm. says next season, uh, do you think Joe Linton should go out on loan? And we'll read out your message from Brazil a little bit later. But Joe Linton out on loan? I think I think that's a little bit too early. Do you think? Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. See that happening. But... I, th I think now is the time with the remaining few games in the season. Now is the time for him to really show what he really can do. And uh, and also pre-season will be a big determining factor in that as well. So I mean, I I believe I I believe in his ability. I think he will step up to the plate during this time. But if he doesn't, then uh, a loan spell will have to be considered. Rob, you rock on there, Andrea Perlo, look there. Andrea Perlo, I like I like that. I like that. It's one of the nicer comments I've had about uh, this new look. Do you think you can play like him? Oh. Uh... <laughs> Well, well, well you, you've you've seen me play. You've you've seen me play like him, so I'll let you be the judge of that. Well, we'll uh, we'll bring in Perlo. Um Would you bring Jetro back? I think all three of us will would agree with that, Jonas. I think that's pretty obvious. Um, Danny Rose has got a small yeah. chance to try and you got improve. three yeses there. Yeah. So right, this section is a little bit of a mix of a, of a, a bit of everything. What's happened? Um, with the news the last um, seven days, and of course, it's all not just football that. Um, please keep your WhatsApp coming, 0747 We'll read them back out um, towards later on this show as Rob decides to go um, sideways there. Um, but not just football, you've seen the Black Lives Matter campaign everywhere. You, you switch on Twitter, you switch on Facebook, you switch on the news. There was some sort of protest against it, and it's we've seen it with the past seven days. We've seen Newcastle, all of their squad pay their respects by kneeling down at the training ground. And, of course, we've seen DeAndre Yedlin speaking out this week about he's saying that his dad is happy that he's here in the UK and not over in the e over in the US of A. But, Rob, how much role should a, fo a football play in this? I think, well, this is clearly a massive situation and a really sad one and um, huge respect to, to George Floyd, rest in peace, and um, his family and close friends can't imagine what they're going through right now. Uh, but I think now, I think football giving it the platform that it needs, or, or using football as a platform to give it the voice that it needs to, I think is a really good idea. It's how far you take it, isn't it? because we've seen now with some, and I will call them idiots, people who are looting shops, and it's going further than further than racism it's going you're going criminal activity where you're looting you're robbing people you're bashing cars up who are at red lights and stuff like that it's taking it to another extreme of course then there's also you look at social distancing as well with with protests around the uk and the us and around the world and that and it's how much is that really involved in football it's more of a human rights side of thing but mm. you've, see, you've seen people 
should it be kept out of football, Sam? Because that's that's the argument. Because the one side we were praised and criticised for posting on Twitter and Facebook for posting a black screen. You kind of please everybody. And then we'll criticise on Instagram for not posting nothing. And people are saying, well, wait a minute, you've got a platform, you should be using that. Where do you stand on that? Um, it is a difficult one, and there's kind of no real right or wrong answer because, like you say, you can't please everyone. Um, at the end of the day, it's in football, whether you like it or not. It is. It's, it's rife. We've seen so many horrible incidents down the years, and it's such an important issue that's been brought to light, and it's... It is really important whether you want to keep it out of football or not. I mean, what can you say? This it, it's it's so hard and difficult for certain ethnic groups these days, and especially like in in America, it's it's just awful. So there's no real easy way of putting it, but the fact of the matter is, it's in football whether you like it or not, and with most of the squads doing the, the blackout thing and so many footballers and uh, certain media outlets and clubs and getting behind it, then it, it's in football, whether you, whether you like it or not. It is. We've seen, obviously, I think you'd probably be saying the Premier League when it resumes. You've seen people like Marcus Turam, who was the son of Lillian, who was obviously a campaigner himself when he was around playing football. Weston McKenney, a US international. Jaden Sansa was on the picture just before with... Ashraf uh, Hakimi as well, who's a great right back. I love Newcastle to sign him. Just off the topic for a second. But um, they're, they're using their images in the Bundesliga. I can't really clamp down on it because it's it's a human, it's a global human rights thing. And it's in one sense, is, are we going to see more of it, Rob, in the Premier League that players want to express their beliefs? But we've seen it in the past where Nicholas Benter pulled down the shorts and got fined more than what people do for racism in football. It's like, where's where do you draw the line with it, Rob? Mm. Well, I think looking at it, at the Bundesliga's this weekend uh, matches, now since the Bundesliga has restarted, they've always preceded every game with a minute silence or a moment silence uh, for everyone who has died of COVID. This weekend, however, uh, they've all taken uh, the bow, the knee, uh, during that moment's silence. So I think a huge... It, that, that, that is a huge sign in itself and I think that is that is where the Premier League should take inspiration from I think of course it, it goes without saying that um, you, you, this is a you know being, being racist in football is an absolutely considerably more serious than uh, Nicholas Bentner or, like putting down his shorts it's it, you know it has to be right up there at the moment you know in the past few years or so We've seen FIFA dish out um, small change fines uh, for racist uh, crowds, racist chanting, etc. Uh, you know, Chelsea had it last year. You know, it's it's just one of those things where there is not enough punishment for it at the moment, and I think it's only a matter of time before things improve. But goodness me, they do have to improve. Yeah, there's, it's. I mean, Raheem Sterling brought it on last year and he was fantastic at it. But please let us know what you think of the human rights. I'm sure we'll talk about it again. If a Newcastle player does it, I'm sure we'll be talking about that again to express their opinions. And in section three later on, just to give you a heads up, I can see Will in the background, so I haven't forgotten about you, Will. Um, Will is a former member, so he is just watching us at the moment. Um, Will will bring in a section three, so you've probably still got another 20 minutes or so. So, um, yeah, he's given us a thumbs up there. Right, um, and Johnny's presenting that one as well. But I want to talk about, um, in Paul's, not very happy about this, lads. You know what I'm going to bring up now is the season ticket money. It seems that that we are speaking about it every week. And now we've seen Chianora has written to Oliver Downden in support to try and help. What you're trying to achieve here, Sam? Is you're just trying to put pressure on Newcastle to speak out? Yeah, that's exactly what she's doing. Um, how, I mean, it's been touched upon the past few weeks now. How season ticket holders have been charged for next season two or three times already is absolutely disgusting 
it's it's unimaginable to think this is happening. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not directly, you know, involved with it because I don't have um, a season ticket because of my travel. But you've got my ticket for the Man City game waiting there. Have you heard anything about that? Because I haven't. I, I think we can pretty much kiss goodbye to our uh, refunds and all that, which, you know, is by the by. But there are some people around. I mean, how much have you been charged, Lee? I think I've been charged the most out of our group. I think, including the FA Cup, it's about 200 quid so far. But, um, That's a lot of money. It, well, it's, it is for some people. I mean, 200 quid could feed a family. Um, we've seen people obviously with the times that we're in at the moment, the pandemic, that a lot of people are scrimping and scraping and people have lost their jobs and stuff with furlough and all that. And, you know, I, I, I'm in a lucky position because I'm not suffered massively, but I brought this up in the chat that we've got is that a family of four, that could be a grand for a family of four and that could feed them for a month. And, you know, people have been laid off and I think the club are hiding behind the fact there's a takeover. I really, really do. Um, I personally think that they are trying to push this on to the new owners. And it's like, it's a coward's way out. It really, really is. But the, the easiest thing to do, Rob, for the new owners is just to come in and switch it. And then you've got the fans straight on board, isn't it, haven't you? Of course, that, that would be a huge way to get uh, the new fans right on board. But I think above all this, even if the club don't do the right thing uh, down the end of the line, then we can always take this to uh, make this a consumer rights issue. Because if you've paid to like to, to go to a game that that never occurred, that goes against the terms and conditions. So this is, I think, this is above all the consumer rights issue. But I think the club are making this as difficult as possible for for everyone who has tickets to those matches. Uh, because of course, Ashley, he likes to be a bit risky, doesn't he? He's uh, he he just sees spreadsheets rather than feelings. And, uh, you know, we, we've seen other clubs um, who have refunded, either refunded or they, they've at least given the consumer um, the right to choose where they want that money to go back to, whether they want it back in their bank accounts or whether they want it uh, refunded uh, or whether they want it uh, donated to NHS charities. Uh, to the Academy, I think there was a Crystal Palace fan who was interacting with us on social media this week. Yeah, other clubs have done the right thing in, in letting the consumer decide where they want that money that they've already spent. And Newcastle, I think, uh, they're not doing what is right in a legal sense. Uh, thanks, Rob. Uh, plug, plug in nicely for NFTV Extra Polls, who will be on the Section 3. Um, we are doing a lot more videos over on NFTV Extra. It's a second channel. Not many people know about it. A lot of stuff, um, two or three uploads a week now over on there. And we've got a politician... We'll be talking a little bit about it as well. So please head over to NFTV Extra and have a look at what we're doing on there. It's a, it's a less serious approach to videos, shall we say, on there. Um, but going back to that issue once again, Sam, is a fraud? Um, no, it's not. Um, because they do list it in their T's and T's, which it's just a real shitty way of doing business, which shouldn't come as any surprise to to us really of uh, what we've put up with over the past 13 years um there's going to be court cases if there's no um refunds that's inevitable but should the takeover happen sooner rather than later there's just so many easy wins for these new guys so many easy wins refunding renaming things contract signings investment in the area investment in facilities so many easy wins and that will be top of the list i've seen a great comment which i highlighted just before apologies of, i think it was done by ryan would you would you go back to st james's park if the refund's not there obviously we're seeing it with the ten thousand free tickets that we're giving out to try and fill the stadium will this test the patients rob even more they will go off ryan even more of Newcastle fans if they go back next season. Next um, season so the takeover doesn't happen and then there's no refunds. Toxic? Um, it, it's Yeah, it's, it's just asking for a more toxic environment. And I think uh, for the fan base to be divided, because of course many people will be hurt 
helped so much by this, and they'll say they'll they'll call for a boycott. Other, and then we'll, we'll we'll just go back on the boycott argument that we were at this time last year again uh, after Rafa left. And of course, some people will be for boycotts, some people will be against boycotts, and before we know it, the fan base will be completely divided again. And that is what Ashley wants, because the worst case scenario, as far as he sees it, if he, if there is no refunds, is that the fan base is divided again. Some will go to the games, some will not go to games. And it's a whole toxic atmosphere where we were, and it just feels like we've not made any progress since last year. Um, so, of course, it's just all the more toxicity and need to get Ashley out of the club. It will become toxic. Jay's just made a fantastic point on the chat there, which you can see on your screens, is that if it, if it goes to where the takeover falls through, and I generally worry that it could turn violent this time because it's been... Mm been quietly protested you see what West Ham done I think it could get to that stage where it'll push mm. one or two individuals over the edge and take it really really to heart, they don't care if they get locked up for a weekend, they don't care if they can't attend a game for 12 months or whatever I think it will push one or two over the edge and think that's enough for me you've ripped the heart and soul, that's it mm. and it's, it's a case of how far is your heartstrings pulled with the club isn't it Sam? Yeah, it's a tricky one. I do agree that things are going to turn pretty nasty if it doesn't go through. But to be fair, if you if you believe what you read at this point, if it does fall flat, it's not actually Mike Ashley's fault. It'll be down to the Premier League, essentially. So but then if that does happen, it's, then it's, the least just... Ashley can do is is refund because that's how businesses should work. And like I say, it's a consumer rights issue. Totally agree, Rob. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred. How do you think that if it doesn't get a refund, um, could you see like a credit on next year's season ticket, or could uh, I don't know offer a free home and away kit to make up the difference, or because a refund? Do you think about how many refunds have got to go through? You're talking what season tickets is about thirty eight thousand, forty thousand people. That's a lot of refunds to try and what rattle through do you think it'll be some sort of credit or a free home kit or away kit sam how they're going to do it it's, it's a tricky one i mean if you're going to refund people a vast proportion of them are just going to be spending it on next season's tickets anyway so it's all going to get all recycled yes there'll be a few that don't renew and you've got the, the free tickets who, you know, they've then got to make a decision. Do they want to renew and pay or do they want to leave it, let it lie? Um, I, I just can't see them not doing anything. The hiding behind the takeover, which is why they're not refunding at the moment. I think... You think that's wrong, though? The whole takeover will... Um, or do you think there's some yes. sort of... Do you think there's some sort of legal case there there where we can't do any transactions? Well, to play devil's advocate, I think on both sides of this deal, they were both expecting it to be done by now. Mm. I don't think anyone expected this, expected it to drag on this long, at least not us. Um, so that's kind of maybe something in their defence. However, it, money in the consumer's pocket is far more important right now than money in their pocket because they're in a lot in a lot better position than many people in the country who can't work so they need to be refunding they, they everyone else has pretty much they need to follow suit and do it quickly communication stay tuned for an exclusive chris woff interview which will be out in a couple of days where we talk a little bit about the season ticket, the takeover, which um, brings me nicely on to another love letter. Who loves a good letter? Lads, do you love letters? No. no all right. Not ones like these. <laughs> Thanks, Sam, for that. Yes, so uh, the Premier League have acknowledged, and again, I can never pronounce this. Apologise, Rob, or correct us. Hatis Jennis. Have I pronounced that right, Rob? Uh, Chengis. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I know you would keep us right with grammar. Um, but this one is from the Premier League to her lawyer slash solicitor, Mr. Dixon, basically saying that we've acknowledged 
your concerns and they'll consider it. Uh, is it just an acknowledgement, uh, Rob, or should we be a little bit worried? I think uh, when I saw that bit of news, I, I referred. I, I was thinking of the time the uh, Henry Winter interview uh, was here on the channel, and he said, "When it comes to the Premier League, money does the talking." So uh, I think above here, like right him, moral. yeah, yeah, moral as well. Um, I can't see this being a massive issue in the Premier League's eyes. Of course, it is a massive issue all over the world, but as far as the Premier League is concerned. I think the money will do the talking over this. Mm. Please get your comments in, live chat, and your WhatsApp. Uh, we'll be reading them out in about five to ten minutes' time, and you'll see the number on your screen, which is Sam um, 0747-649-7166. That's because I don't know it off by heart, so I have to rely on it keep appearing as well. Oh, what's that you drinking there, really Sam? Should be by now. What's that you're drinking? Have that I just is, well, you, you, yes. That's uh, Puffin Tears. It's an IPA from none other than Beer 52. I did see a question in the live chat before. Is uh, is it a mixture or is it just light beers? The answer is you can choose. There is an option for mixed, so you can have stouts, kind of darker ales, or you can choose the lighter option, which um, IPAs and lagers and stuff like that. Plenty to choose from. Beer52.com forward slash nftv nicely done i think you'll be still on the thatchers though oh, aren't yeah. you? Nice. rob what were you drinking on there oh, you yours will be alcohol free uh, but what will it be yeah oh uh probably i'll mix my drinks up and go for some pepsi oh. max and j2o oh i'm, I'm living i live on the edge of it no 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 god no no not in the same glass no no <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yes, I'll probably get a. As soon as the t takeover happens, I am running to Asda. Don't care if I have to queue. Uh, but yeah, I live uh, just about 100 meters or so from uh, an Asda. I'll be sprinting there, get a 12 pack can hashtag cans, and maybe some J2Os if I, if I feel like it. It's all, all depends on my mood. A scrumpy Jack says Jonathan Young. Jonathan um, follows us on all the socials. So thank you very much, Jonathan. But. Um, Mine will probably be a soft Fosters or a soft course. Um, but, um, yeah, sure. we'll, we all know what um, Sam's will be, which will be uh, Thatcher's. Nobody likes a Thatcher's. Isn't that right, Rob? <laughs> Certainly, uh, that, yeah, that, that's my opinion, yes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, get your comments in about what, what you're going to be drinking take overnight. And, again, fire in your WhatsApp, five to ten minutes. So, but, Sam, she's spoken out once again. Hatties, uh, Rob, please say it for us. Hatish Chengiz. There you go. And thank you very much. So she has spoken out once again. Um, she's not letting it go, is she, Rob? Who's pushing her? Is it her own agenda or someone pushing it for her? Um, I think the way I see it is that it's more a side of an opinion and she feels very strongly towards that side of the opinion. Um, I... And yeah, it, it, it is a huge concern. But when you look at other countries who have sort of hands and dibs in the Premier League franchise, I mean, look at China. They have a huge human rights, um, poor a poor human rights record. So uh, when, when it comes to Saudi Arabia, I don't really see why they should be singled out for worse treatment than China when they're called out on this. But of course, in, in the case of Hatish Chengiz, I think... We, of course, that, that the Saudi Arabia government she feels is responsible for the death of Jamal Khashoggi, so uh, her husband, of course. So I mean, huge condolences to her, and and I can't imagine the pain that she's feeling. Um, but I I do feel that if you're trying to single out Saudi Arabia for a poor human rights record, I think you need to look at other countries as well that have hands and dibs in the Premier League, like China, including our own country, including our own. Jason mm. Carter, yeah, this is what I wanted to bring up to you, Sam. So I may as well read out Jason's message. Why is you not speaking out against the likes of your Starbucks, your Disney, and all the other businesses? Facebook's another one, Twitter, they've got a partial share in it. Why why is you not having to go at these? Why is it just Newcastle United? Uh two reasons. One, the deal's not done yet, so there's still time to scupper it, and with all the 
companies and whatnot that is li Jason's listed there. That's already done, finished, nothing you can do. And secondly, we're an easy target. Easy target, it gets column inches every time. Football, massive business all over the world. Premier League, biggest league in the world. It's just an easy target. But yeah, the main reason is the deal's not done yet. Simple as that, there's still opportunity to get in the way. Speaking of the deal, obviously it's been very little news this week, probably the quietest that we've had in the past eight weeks. But Rob, you like that though, don't you? <laughs> yeah, because what I've noticed a lot this week is because there's been no news, fans have not been jumping on any bandwagons. And I've only seen one person on Twitter post something along the lines of, oh, it's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, and I've been quite active on Twitter this week for, for once. Uh, so, yeah, I think I, I do like this sort of science. Of course, I really want it done. I'm desperate to get it done. Uh, but time will tell. I mean, I think the Premier League have been more preoccupied with Project Restart. And, um, of course, that has been really busy in, in their schedules, of course, this week. So uh, I, I, I do think it's just a matter of time. Uh, it's just a bit slower because there aren't many people working on it at the Premier League at the moment. So, um, yeah, I, 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 can't, so I can't see there being an effect. Yeah, you're so it's, confident it's, like earlier on, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, the, the next bit of news will be as of when it will be announced rather than, oh, further development, further development, further development. Yeah. N anyone nervous at all? That has been quiet. The longer, it goes, the longer it goes on, the more twitchy you get <sighs> the problem is, is it's the worst and the best time for this to happen it's the best time because we've not missed anything no football's been played there's still plenty of time to prepare properly for next season on the flip side of that the premier league have had so many things to get in the way not least project restart so um I've just got to bring a comment up there because it's absolutely superb. <laughs> Read it out then. <laughs> um, <laughs> Very good, yes. I agree. Today, um, um, yeah, the project restart's obviously taken priority because you've got to get this multi-billion uh, pound organisation back on the road. Um, I am, I am nervous. But at the same time, I do still think it will go through. Fingers crossed. Let's get over to your WhatsApp before we take a break. Um, it just says, hi, I'm from Brazil. Cool. Thank you very much. It's good that we've got international fans. Send us another question, Brazil fan, and we'll answer that for you later on. Uh, Unknown says, cheers, I'm reassured, lads. Uh, don't want to offend anyone with the surname. Um, let's just hope it's not Mr. Ashley. That was Mike earlier on. Hopefully it's not uh, uh, Mr. Ashley. Mal from Stella, not a million miles away from here. Blade and Race is where it first started. Mal will know that. Obviously, the date's coming up very, very quick. Uh, have the Premier League ever knocked back a takeover application? Have the Rob? Oh, that is a very good question, actually. Uh, not that I know of. Um, I suppose, I think, in terms of the fit and proper persons tests, not many people knew of it before the whole Steve Dale with Bury FC came about last year and everyone was crying out, "Why? how come Steve Dale passed the fit and proper persons test? And to be honest, I think if he was able to pass the fit and proper persons test to be, be in charge of Bury FC, then surely I could do it with 10 quid uh, takeover of, of a, a Premier League club. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so I, Go, going back to the original question, no, I, I, I've never thought of uh, anything, uh, any perspective not only being turned away by the Premier League. I think takeovers have failed, but not down to the Premier League. So, yeah, it's good, mm. good, question, good question, Mal. Uh, unknown says, hi, a week removed from the whole June the 1st, and still no, not heard nothing regarding the takeover. Start to get soul destroying here, nothing. Do you think there's any red flags because we haven't had anything concrete one way or another? Wor worried about Losing Longstaff too. The thought of losing the home-grown talent is a killer. And for peanuts mm. as well. 
Uh, the long staff side of things will be covered by Johnny on the next section, which will be in a few minutes' time. But um, soul destroying, Sam. Um, some fans are a little bit worried. Can you understand why? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. The fact is, I mean, the kind of worst thing that could happen in a way was this news to break so early on in the process. So now we've had how many weeks of staying at home, not doing anything, waiting for cans, essentially. So everyone gets um, nervous and twitchy and it doesn't really help anyone. So I can understand where it's coming from, but patience is the key. And, it, you know, there's plenty of time, plenty of time. We need one more win to really secure safety. And then it should all be sorted so we this summer can be, well, you'd like to think at least this summer can be um, planned properly in terms of recruitment. Yeah, 2020 has been absolutely disgusting, yeah. Uh, Rob, we put this on with tw- earlier on. Uh, do you think Amanda Staveley's $1.6 billion court case with Barclays that is meant to be starting tomorrow will have any delay or impact on the takeover? Um I've never come across anything, any prospective business deal being put off by the fact that the prospective new owner uh, has an upcoming court case. Uh, I've never come across anything like that. So I I very much doubt it, but it must be stressed that I'm certainly not an expert on uh, this sort of thing, this legal, sort of financially legal sort of matter. Ask Martin Lewis. He'd uh, He'd be the one. Yeah. Uh, next question, do you think if we allowed players to get involved in politics, it's a bit of a double double standards? Obviously, don't want politics to stop the Saudi takeover. Yeah, I, I think we'll all agree on that. Try and keep politics out of football, but human rights side of things, sometimes you do have to mention it, uh, which is the right thing to do. And the final one, please keep your WhatsApp coming in. There's loads more that Johnny's going to be reading. Uh, later on in the show, and we're, we're talking all about loans and contracts and stuff. And this is Gary from the two, and he says, the longer the takeover goes on, the more worried I'm going to get. Rob, do you understand that frustration as well? Yeah, because, uh, well, the common saying is no news is good news, but when you're absolutely desperate for something as big as this to happen, then no news most definitely is not good news. And the longer that you're trying to wait for this good news to happen, yeah, there's every chance of it fizzling out because we, we've been here before. We, we've been here before. We're being desperate for Ashley to be removed. Lo and behold, it's never happened. So I think we need to, like I say, patience is what I've been saying for several weeks now. And yeah, I, I do feel like I'm sounding like, a bit like a broken record. But this is in the Premier League's hands now. This is the furthest that any prospective takeover away from Ashley has gotten. So I think this is away from Ashley's hands now. It's out of his hands. And that's a massive hurdle jumped in itself. I think that, that, that is certainly the biggest hurdle jumped, the biggest challenge. Let's Let's try and move forward. But it's a slowly but surely job. Fingers crossed. Uh, Sam, if you just bring up the banner, what to explain it in section three. So this is what's coming up in the next ad break where Johnny's going to be talking about everything regarding loans. So, you know, you talk about the three players who are currently now. Are they going to have their loans extended? Obviously, Jamie Sterry and Jack Colback has been asked to stay away. Matty Longstaff, of course. Will Rob Elliott, although he's not playing, will he be registered later? Will Andy Carroll all of that is to come in the next section. In the next section as well, uh, uh, we're all saying goodbye. Um, I'm going to be leaving you. I'm going to be handing over to John. And ooh, someone's got a bit of an echo there. And then we'll also be bringing in Will. And we'll be bringing in Paul as well. So, Sam, play an advert. See you later, everyone. You're watching The Black and White Show with Newcastle Fans TV. So that was fantastic, and we are going to be bringing you a few sponsors. And the first one that we're talking about today is Three Retro. I've got Owen with me, and I've also got Sam with me. Owen, have you ever purchased something from Three Retro? Yeah, I've purchased from Three Retro before. Their shirt quality is absolutely amazing. You'll find a range of shirts on there, um, old, uh, old shirts from the '90s, and even older than that. You can find ones from the '70s on there as well. Good quality shirts. I have to agree, and the delivery is actually really quick, considering we've just um, came in and out of a pandemic as well. Uh, I'm currently wearing mine one. Mine's from the 93-94 season. Feels nice. 
You can get loads of different sizes. You can get medium. You can get extra large. It goes all the way up. And the great thing about three retro Sam is that they deliver worldwide as well. Isn't it just I myself plumped for the uh, 1995 brown ale one, the one and only, after my lovely mother donated mine to a charity shop some years ago. I needed to replace it. They're extortionate on eBay. So three retro, very reasonably priced, quick delivery, absolutely seamless. And it was only £30 for that shirt, which is an absolute bargain. If you spend over £50, you get free delivery as well, which is absolutely fantastic. And now more and more shirts, Owen, more mm. retro shirts in particular, are becoming more and more popular. You see a lot of fans wearing away shirts and home shirts going back 20 plus years. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, for someone who wasn't born in that era, it's brilliant to see um and brilliant to get hold of those shirts from that era because they are the most beautiful yeah i, I don't think we've had that that amazing quality of shirt since maybe the early 2000s so it's brilliant to be able to get your hands on them for a reasonable price with quick delivery what more, 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 more could you want brilliant owen's a lot younger than us too me and sam but on the website, they don't just do Newcastle United stuff. So if you've got friends and family in a divided household of different fans, they do several of other clubs. They also do national kits. We've got a lot of England shirts available as well. There's a link in the description. Get yourself on the three rep row. Get a bargain whilst you're there. Welcome back to the Black and White Show with Newcastle Fans TV. Well, welcome back to part three of the Black and White Show. I've got two very special guests, but firstly, I'm sorry about this, Paul. We've got a welcome back, a former member of the channel. It is Will. Will, welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. Hiya, thank you for having me back. It's nice after a fairly long hiatus to uh, finally see your faces again. <laughs> I'm liking I your uh, lockdown haircut, Paul. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. very, very affectionate, aren't I? I'm going with the John Joe look. <laughs> oh, everyone should go for the everyone should go for the John Joe look. Uh, we'll have, even you should get rid of your locks and try and join me and Paul. We're not we're not, not a million miles away from that look. Well, anyway. Never. Where's all that come from, Johnny? <laughs> lock, <laughs> locked, locked, locked down beard. Will lock down beard. <laughs> no, and a big welcome to Paul. Right, Paul, how are you today, mate? I'm, I'm well. Yeah, I've had a lovely day, but the last couple of moments I've had a few technical gremlins. So you know that adds to the stress levels and everything. But uh, yeah, apart from that, good day. Good day. Done a few things for the website and everything. So happy days. Yeah, I don't know anything about technical difficulties, Paul, so you'll be fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, this is all about uh, contracts. We're going to talk about Matty Long stuff in great deal. And Paul's got a clip which we'll have on later on in the show. Remember, you can get your WhatsApps as well. It's the number is 07476 497166. We'll read them all the way throughout this final part here on the Black and White Show. Um, yeah, Matty Longstaff's going to be a big talking point. We're going to be talking the likes of Valentino Lazaro, Danny Rose, Nabil Bentaleb. Um, three players that actually run out of contract are the likes of Andy Carroll, Javier Manquillo, Rob Elliott. I know Rob Elliott might still need a third choice goalkeeper as well. So a lot to talk about, a lot of stuff to get through. Um, Will, I'll let you start. We'll start with Matty Longstaff. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of reports in the press this week the fact that Udinese are very very interested in bringing Matty Longstaff to St. James, uh, from St. James's Park to, to Italy. I, I would rather be at St. James's Park personally but um, <laughs> the £30,000 a week Udinese are knocking on the door. If you're Matty Longstaff would you be tempted? Um, it's really difficult. I think it's gone, I think you can see this from, from both ways. Um, I think more so from the club's point of view I think it's a big failure of foresight because if you think of Matty's contract a two-year contract that he's signed in 2018 runs out this summer on 800 pounds a week you'd think for a young prospect they would have um, appearance bonuses they'd have clauses in there the option to extend the contract the option to automatically extend it if he plays x amount of games or he gets a wage increase after x amount of games so the foresight from the club you know when he signed that contract and even last summer when he was a big favourite under uh, Steve Bruce coming in and spotted him in training. They clearly didn't think too far ahead in the future and it's coming back to bite them. I think it's that lack of a football man at the top of football operations at Newcastle United. 
and not thinking about player development. And I think it's it would be a really big shame for Newcastle, I think, with you know this prospective takeover potentially happening and to have a fresh start. I think one thing going forward that has been mentioned, especially in the early stages of this takeover, would be their um, ambition to use the academy and to use it to build because with financial fair play and all that, Newcastle can't exactly go out and just spend all the money in the world. And to have this team being built around, say, the Longstaff brothers, I think would be a great direction for the for the club to go. And to lose Matty after only one season, a very promising season, three goals um, for a midfielder is always a good return. And to go to Italy, where he could maybe get better development, consistently get first-team games, maybe there's a concern that once a taker comes in, they're buying big names in. I think Matty does have a lot to think about, but in terms of money, I think this whole situation could have been avoided if the people high up at Newcastle could have had some foresight. Yeah, for sure. It's a, com- it's a, it's a v- very valid point. Paul, you did a big video on the, on the main channel on OC NFTV Extra, another channel I'm going to plug. We've rebranded from the other yeah, 23s yeah. and Paul's done, a lot of, Paul's done a lot of good work. Oh, perfect, Simon Lee. Perfect, Simon. Um, <laughs> no, in all seriousness, you did a very good video through the week. Um, what I don't think was mentioned too much was the potential link with Watford. Now, the family that own Udinese also own Watford. It would make sense potentially to go, well, why don't you spend six months in Udinese? I see how you feel. And in January, if you're not loving it, basically, we'll take you to Watford. And it's, just, it's in England. It's not a million miles away from uh, Newcastle, unless you ask Isha, because it probably will be a million miles away. Um, but it, it does make sense, doesn't it? It would be, if you look just looking at from a footballing point of view, it works both ways for Matty, doesn't it? It does. And a business perspective as well, because the thing is, if he goes to Udinese, to pay a lot less compensation than what he would do if he went directly to Watford from a, you know, obviously from our category A uh, youth set up to theirs, they, they would have to pay more money. So this is a, a way to save money. It also, you can sell them the lifestyle, the culture. But I was just disgusted that a 14th place team in Italy were outrunning us, you know, with the wages that they pay uh, and their history and everything else like that, everything taken into consideration. Will just totally and utterly nailed it. There's been no forward planning at that club again. It's time and time and time again. It's Groundhog Day all of the time. You know, um, Mr Magoo could have seen this one coming a mile off. He's played, what, eight or nine games, scored three goals, looked more than decent. You've got Jock Cal- Jack Colbach's out there doing nothing. You've got the Grand Iron model, Ashlaf Lazar, who's in a team with Emmanuel Riviere, and we're paying him absolutely shed loads. You've got Henri Savé, who must be sat there. I don't know. He can't be doing much. Is he the new tea lady? I don't know. Uh, he's going to, he's going to be in my, like mine, Paul. Don't worry. You know what I mean? And like, we're wasting money left, right and centre. To me, I mean, I had to pull over and do that video. And I was I had to give myself 10 minutes afterwards. I was absolutely stunned. Uh, you know, you've got Jack Colback money that's just sat there. Even if you just to say, whatever Jack Colback's on, give it to him. You know, because to me, you get more potential. And if it doesn't work out for him, you can sell him further down the line and make money. Um, it's just stupidity that we come to associate with the people who run our club, mainly Lee Charnley, who I've said before, I wouldn't put him in charge of ordering the photocopy of paper, never mind running the entire operation, because I don't even think his own uh, mother and his own wife probably like him. So... Um, <laughs> I was absolutely and utterly stunned. I want us to keep the likes of Mighty Longstaff. I went through the generation of losing Yashiras, losing, you know, even Carricks and players like this out of the area. These are players, these are things that should never have ever happened. And I saw it time and time and time again. I don't want it to happen again. No, I completely agree, Paul. Uh, remember, keep getting your WhatsApps in. It's the only guaranteed way of getting your message across on the Black and White Show. It's 07476 497166. I got a telling off from Paul last week that I didn't get the number right, so I made sure I've got it right this time. <laughs> um, Will, big question about Matty Longstaff. Is he worth £30,000 a week? Or do you think that the deal that Newcastle have put together, about £20,000 a week reportedly from uh, the Daily Mail, is a fair offer because I personally think twenty thousand pounds a week for a player that's only played ten games in the Premier League is a fair offer. Or is he waiting to see what happens at the takeover? I think it's a bit. I think it's a bit of both. Um, I think in reference to 
pounds. I think it um, shows how much the game has inflated, I guess, especially with young talent. And with Udinese, the upside for them is that they're not paying a transfer fee if this is to go through, you know, apart from compensation of under half a million quid. So as a financial package, it probably works out for them. But for Matty, I think the club didn't anticipate, you know, as I said before, they didn't anticipate for his growth to be the way that it has. And I think they probably thought that £20,000 a week would be enough to do it. I think if I was the director of Newcastle, that would be the figure that I was looking at. I think the interest from, Uden- from Udinese is definitely head-turning. Um, but Matt is thinking about his own future. And, you know, for someone who's put in such impressive performances when he stepped onto the football field, he's gotten probably less game time than I would have anticipated. Is that when Sean broke into the team last season, he was he pretty much stayed there until he got injured. Whereas with Matty, he has been in and out. And then I know Key leaves in January, but you also signed Nabil Bentaleb. And it probably says that there's not too much confidence in him. And I think for Matty as well, he's at a younger stage than Sean was. Because Sean broke in last year after he had loan spells um, away, from the club in, away from the club in Scotland and at Blackpool. Whereas Matty has literally gone straight in. And... I think for probably where Newcastle think his development is and where I think his development is, I think the offer of around £20,000 a week on a four-year contract, say, I think is a fair enough deal because he's already worth, what, £15 million minimum as a young a young England international. But the offer from Udinese is definitely going to head turn for him. I think with the takeover, you can look at it both ways. You know, It's a better future for the club with Mike Ashley not at the helm, but it's also the potential for the club to bring in someone else. And you know there was a a, a bit on the table for a French midfielder, um, Bukhari Samar, I think, in yeah. January of a record-breaking deal as well. So that how much confidence there really is in Matty Longstaff, I think, remains to be seen. Yeah. We're going to get Paul's clip on very, very shortly, but Paul will bring up a fantastic point about the midfield debate, really. Where does Matty fall into this debate if he signs a new contract? Do you think at the minute he can really force a way into the starting eleven, Or is there too many players ahead of him in the pecking order? I'm thinking Shelby, I'm thinking Hayden, I'm even thinking Sean and Bentler because they're getting more games than Matty. There is. There is. There's a, a huge amount of uh, players in his road. But are you not telling me? I mean, the players I listed before, right? Midfielders by trade. They are going to be on about hundred thousand pound a week. I mean, what 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 is an extra few thousand? And I, I have heard of people, whether it's right or wrong, I'm not pretending to be working for KFC and in the know. You know what I mean? But um, it's literally down to penny pinching and a few thousand pound here and there, and certain agreements and stuff. It just doesn't sit well with me at all. I mean, obviously Bentley, he's only in on, on a on a temporary sort of deal. Um, so we're not going to have him forever. Shelby, every summer, gets linked consistently with West Ham. Can we keep hold of him forever? I don't know. He's obviously getting on. To me, you've got to be looking at that next generation and integrating them in, and I think he is one who can make the step up uh, in in the grid. And also, as well, from an academy point of view, if you're in that academy now when you're trying to attract new players to the academy when hopefully the takeover goes through and stuff, if you can show... That yeah, yes, we can offer this progression. You know, um, it makes it more appealing to other young footballers who are coming, and with that, we're not just here to sort of get rid of you when the first blip comes or, or whatever. To me, I would invest a little bit more and try and meet them somewhere in the middle, get that contract agreed, whether it's even stagnated with you know how many games he plays per how much he gets. Um, I just think the club are pulling on his heartstrings because he's a Newcastle lad and they're trying to abuse that at the end of the day. It's his job. He's playing for about £800 a week at the moment, which is peanuts. Uh, and again, you I, I don't care who you are, you're going to look round on, on that training pitch day in, day out. I'm on £800 and somebody doing exactly the same as me is sat over there. He's not even registered for a match day squad. That's got to be frustrating. You know, I think he is worth, he is worth the money and I think he will come good. And you've got to have a squad, as we've shown. We seem to get injury crisis that hit certain parts of the team. Uh, and I would most definitely have him in. And who knows? You win the FA Cup. You're into Europe. You know, we're not far off that. 
And then you're talking about, again, your squad. You need It's a squad game that we need to have. It's not just about the first couple of players. Isaac Hayden, is he staying? Is he going all the time, every single summer? I know he's got a personal situation, uh, but that seems to change a lot. So let's keep the young lads and try and build it around them. Yeah, perfectly Hashtag said. <laughs> beat, beat me to it. <laughs> right, Paul, everyone who didn't see your video on uh, through the week will get to see a two-minute clip. Lee, whenever you're ready, take it away. You're watching The Black and White Show with Newcastle Fans TV. The only concrete offer on the table is that from New Nase, and it is beaten away. Bid. We're Newcastle United and we can't match Udinese. And we wonder why it gets uh, called carry on. To, you know, carry on Looney Tunes and all that. It's because of stupid, st absolutely heads gone ideas. Can Lee Charnley not do the most simplest of tasks? Can he switch a light switch on? We're risking losing. A player in the current climate where money isn't going to be splashed around. We don't know still about the takeover for definite. So we should be getting the likes of Matty Longstaff signed up and saves your money so we can use the what money we have on other areas of the pitch which is glaring. Look at some of the money we've wasted before. Signing players like Ashlaf Lazar and what this must say to the kids in the academy. You can do all that you want. We're going to offer you peanuts. Or are you going to have to bugger off somewhere else? We should be highlighting the likes of Sean Longstaff, who I don't know what thinks. I mean, he wanted a contract, and that's not being sorted out either. But looking at these lads, they're going to be thinking, there's, there's just no point. It's his hometown club. Why are we struggling again to keep hold of our best talent? Have we not learned from the past where we let an absolute... Tidal wave of good players leave this area and end up playing for West Ham's, for Manchester United's, for Blackburn's, for Southampton's. We need to be retaining players of the calibre of, of Mighty Longstaff. Whether you think he's good enough now or what not, that is all up to debate. But there is a huge amount of potential there and we're going to get 425k compensation. Want to get something off your chest? Interact with us in the live chat. And WhatsApp us your messages on 0747 649 7166. This is The Black and White Show. A very passionate response from a Mr Paul Rutter in regards to the defence of keeping Matty Longstaff. Will, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you think Matty will still be a Newcastle player next season, whenever next season will be? Um... I couldn't. I don't know if I. I actually don't know. Um, I'm really. I'm really split on it. I think. I think an improved offer will come from Newcastle. I think this whole stuff about Indonesia. I think this coming out into the press isn't a surprise. You know, to maybe force Newcastle's hand, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem that any big business decisions, such as contracts, is going to be sorted until there's clarity on who the owners are. So. It's against the ticking clock, and I, if you ask me right now, I think he's going to go. Uh, Paul, I'm going to have to quickly refresh myself because I can't hear you what you're saying, but I'm sure it was a valid point there, Will. So bear with me one second. I'll ask you a question before I refresh myself. Uh, Paul, Valentino Lazaro, it looks like he wants to stay a little bit long term. And by the time I come back, how big are these nine or ten games for Valentino Lazaro? They're huge. Absolutely huge. Um End of the day, you know, is there's there's big competition up in the places that he's you know trying to play in. You've got ASM and Miggy further forward. I don't think he's fantastic when he's asked to play at fullback. I think he's probably ideally a wing back, but obviously will Bruce um you know look to use a wing back system? I don't know. I think it's is it fifteen million pounds or something that, that the fee's been uh, rumoured to be yeah. uh, awful money. Certainly in the Ashley uh, regime, that's an awful lot of uh, money to use on a player that we've actually got a few options on. But is he certainly an upgrade on the likes of Atsu? Yeah, of course he is. Um, me, me granted, be an upgrade on Atsu, like, but you know. 
I think I think anybody's an upgrade on Christian Atsu after that Nottingham Forest game, which I'm not going to let you talk about, Paul, because we could be here till next week. Takeover might be announced by then. Who knows? Um, I hope it is. Will, I uh, know. Uh, Will, what have you made of Valentino Lazaro from a distance? Because he came in, he was put in the wrong position, in my personal opinion. He was put more of a right wing back. And now you've got a little bit more out of him in that right attacking midfield position. Um, mm-hmm. Do you think that he's worth the potential figure that Newcastle are being linked with? Or do you think maybe um, we, Newcastle could get something better? Well, I think with Lazaro, when this happens, I was I was saying to my friend over in Manchester, who's also a Newcastle fan, this only made sense if Newcastle was going to switch the system to uh, a back four and push him further forward along with uh, Sir Maximin and Almiron. And I think what we saw in that West Brom game, or what at least I saw in that West Brom game, was that system looked as though it was starting to work because we saw that three played together for the first time. It looked, there was a lot more link-up play. It looked like there was more of an attacking threat. I think Lazaro definitely has a lot of potential. I, I can't say that I've seen quite enough of him from the first few games to justify slapping £15 million on him. But then again, how often has he played in the position that he should have been playing in is another thing entirely. So it, it all depends. I think, the, I think the main problem you do have with these loan deals that could turn permanent is that they're so there's a big cloud over any future decisions that Newcastle are going to take because by September there could be new owners and a new manager, let, you know, as well as as well as everything. So you're having to foresee it, and I think to, you know if the deals there for Lazaro, I think I would definitely consider taking it, and for the players available, I think it would be. Would you take it, Will? Would you take it? I would. I think I think he's shown a good amount of potential in there. He's still a young kid. Um, I think he could be a big player for us in years to come if we're to keep him. Yeah, Paul. What about you? Because I, I, I do feel this is where Newcastle need to really show the hand in terms of these players. Now I know there's a takeover loom, and we know potentially we could be taken over very shortly. But you still got to have so. a. Ha- I know you hope so, but you've got to have half an eye on getting players in and he is an improvement and if he is an improvement we need to be in a position that at least he could be on the bench for next season if we've got somebody even better than him if that makes sense yeah definitely I mean I've said before uh, and I've said on a uh, video that's going out shortly actually uh, to me with Mike Ashley it's there's no forward planning it's it's like he sold the players he's put the keys in the envelope and shoved them through the letterbox that that is that is the level of it. He's washed his hands of it. Keys are through the letterbox, just waiting for the new owners to be shown round and you know everything else. Uh, but yeah, is he an up, upgrade on Atsu? Of course, he's an absolute upgrade on the likes of Atsu. He can play in a couple of different positions. He's energetic. He can change games. He's got pace. Um, he has notched as well and really struggled for goals. I think he's definitely worth a punt. Um, and the only thing that Newcastle generally do well and Charlie generally does well is make a decent deal for, you know, you think of like so Martin Dupravka was brought in on the cheap Never Never and was a fantastic uh, addition. Can we do a good deal on him? I would hope that we can uh, and then bring him in and he's a definite, definite, definite upgrade on Christian Atsu who needs to be sent out on loan to Sunderland or something like that. Oh, don't let them do that. Don't let them go on loan to Sunderland. God. Um, right, next next player is Danny <laughs> Rose. I know. <laughs> next player is Danny Rose. Um, oh. I have to be honest, I was I was really, really excited when Danny Rose was announced as a Newcastle player for the, on the, the end of the season. Um, I think I, I've heard recently that there has been an extension agreed with Danny Rose until whenever the end of the season will be. It looks like the 1st of August if Newcastle gets to the FA Cup final, which would be typical Newcastle if we get to an FA Cup final through when? lockdown. But, um, <laughs> well, I'll let you start this one off with Danny Rose. Is he better than what we've got currently? Of the current roster of players, I think he definitely yeah. is. Um, compared to Jetro Willems, if that's who you're referring to, I don't... Th- I don't think so. Um, <laughs> the tricky thing with Danny Rose, I think... I don't really know what we were all expecting because you can only do so much as a left-back. 
and he brings a lot of experience and he's played in a lot of high profile games. We I keep forgetting that he played in the Champions League final not lot long ago. And he that that experience can sometimes be invaluable. But had Jetro Willems not have gotten injured, we Danny Rose wouldn't have even been in our radar. So I think if you're if you have that choice over Willems or Rose, I I'd probably take Willems. It all depends on again. I, I can't. I keep going back to this. On there's no clarity on what's, you know, who's the manager going forward, who's the who are the owners going forward, because if you play a five at the back, then I'd have, I'd rather have Villains. If you play a four at the back, I'd probably rather have Danny Rose. And it's those kind of decisions that need to be taken, and those kind of decisions that need to be put forward. Because at the minute, nobody knows. It's, it's a $300 million question, isn't it? Um, get those WhatsApps coming in. That will be at the end of uh, the show, which is 07476 497 166. A big thank you to all our sponsors, 3 Retro, BF52, which if you need any cans for any potential takeover, BF52 are the ones to be involved with that as well. Uh, and also we've got Amazon as well. who have got four Premier League games, which will be live um, and absolutely free. You don't need an Amazon sponsorship. They will have four Premier League games along with the BBC as well. So if you want to get involved in that, I would recommend it as well. Um, Paul, Danny Rose, I think for me, I would rather have Jetro Willems if Jetro Willems becomes available. However, I personally think Steve Bruce, if he's still manager, will probably prefer Danny Rose. Do you agree? I, I do. And I know I'm a fine one to talk and all that, all that but I, I just think we've got the, uh, the chip shot version of uh, Danny Rose and not the Champions League. England international um, version that Spurs had previously. I do think he's lost a little bit of something. I've seen him in games switch off and not show as much heart, uh, guts and desire. I like how athletic and, I mean, Williams, he seems like he's built like an absolute truck, can get forward, he's got a finish, he's got the cross in him. The goals he's scored are abs- I mean, absolute bundercunts. Really great to enjoy. Um, and I was gutted for the lad when he went down, but you knew something was up straight away. Um, Danny, I mean, we, we've got uh, Danny Rose, we've got Matt Ritchie, haven't we? You can play there at the moment. Uh, Dummett isn't an option until something gets done with the, the Premier League squad. Um, so I think he's better than what we've got at the moment. But I think going forward, uh, I would definitely prefer to have uh, Jethro, you know, Jethro come back uh, into the fold. But I'm with you. Uh, Steve Bruce seems to have a bit of a, a soft spot for him, but I think the wages that we'd have to pay him, the transfer fee as well, everything taken into account. He's made comments as well with regards to other clubs which haven't left a great taste in your mouth on about some of other clubs like uh, Leicester, etc. And um, I don't know. I, personally, for me, I'd have him at the end of the season. FA Cup final, thank you very much. You've done us a job and then look to, to move on. Yeah, I think it'll be an interesting uh, end of the season for Danny Rose because it looks like he'd be allowed to go on a cheaper price when Tottenham Mourinho just doesn't fancy him for whatever reason. A lot of the comments that are coming through are saying Valems, Valems, Valems rather than Danny Rose, Danny Rose. All I'm saying with Danny Rose is that he likes fish and chips in Whitley Bay. Don't we all, Paul and um, Will? But, <laughs> it, you know, oh, that's yeah. what we don't want. We want oh, you know, it's not like Salford fish and chips, is it, Will? Oh, Whitley ones are much better. Maybe delivery would be the first thing I always do. <laughs> NE25 for all those NE25 people out there. Um, right. One, one word, Will. If Danny Rose is available for, say, £5 million or under, do you buy him? Not if, not if Willems is available as well. I'd, I'd rather take him. Personally, Paul. I think Rose is. I think Rose is a big name. Rose is a big name. I think that's kind of what we keep thinking is this person who was England's left back and who was playing in the Champions League final for Spurs. But you know, whatever's happened in the last six months, he's talked so much about his loss of love for football and um, other factors playing on his mind. I, if for me, not anymore. I think Willem is a better player. Paul, what about you? Yeah, for me, it's uh, it's a no. We know for Danny Rose. Big no for Danny Rose. It's a bit of a rhyme, isn't it? Maybe. Who knows? Um, Nabil Bentaleb scored a worldie in a training match at St. James's Park with nobody there. Um, <laughs> I think that sums his um, short tenure at Newcastle so far. Just, just no, one's, no one's probably seen the best of him yet. Paul, I'll let you start with Nabil Bentaleb. Um, he, he, he wants the ball. He, he, he wants the ball. He wants that 
uh, pressure of being able to make the next pass, the next big pass. But do you think maybe he's not better than what we've got? Yeah, again, I was surprised when we signed him. You know, with regards to Matty's development and everything, I was shocked. I thought it was a, a sign and we didn't perhaps need to make. I know he scored an absolute, again, another Bundercon in this 1 1 draw that they've had at St. James's um, recently. But we haven't seen enough from him. We've seen little bits here and there in the cup games. He was quite impressive, but he should be against Leicester opposition. In the Premier League, you can tell he's not played football in quite a long while. He looks rusty. I remember him, obviously, when he was playing for Spurs against us. Um, and again, everybody thought, decent player, decent player. But I think he's a stopgap measure. I really, really do. I think there's there's better alternatives out there for the money. But again, he's coming in, hopefully help us over the line. And then thank you very much. Well, £10 million is the rumoured price for Nabil Bentaleb. Um is it a case of getting a run of games, staying fit, and if he can make an impact in those nine, ten games for Newcastle to say, yeah, we'll have, we'll, we'll take you for, a, say, a three-year contract or whatever, mm-hmm. or do you think maybe Newcastle take over pending might look for somebody even better because it looks like these potential new owners will want better players than Nabil Bentaleb, no disrespect to him. Well, like Paul said, of the players that I thought we would sign in January, he wasn't even one that I had even thought about. And when I watched him play, he did look like he was rusty and looked like he hadn't played in a while. I know he hadn't um, through problems that he had at Schalke. But again, I couldn't really understand why we'd signed him because of the midfield options we had. If you think Sean, you think Isaac Haney, I think John Shelby and Matty Longstaff, you, you're probably fairly well covered, even Keyson Young, who was reserve reserve um, midfielder. But after even watching him, I can't quite make out what it's, it's, it sounds like a strange sentence, but what he's for, um, you know, whether he's a box to box midfielder, whether he's a more defensive midfielder, I thought it, he would add something a bit more, but there wasn't anything that I've seen even in the games against Oxford and West Brom that really made me think, ah, that's why we signed him. I think a good run of games will do him the world of good. Um, but whether he's better than what we've got, I'm, I couldn't really say. And, I think with the options that are potentially out there, if we want to revisit midfield, um, whenever this transfer window is going to be um, and how much money we've, we've got um, to spend in the transfer window, I think there are probably better better options that, out there than Nabil Bentaleb. Um, if, if Matty goes, then I think there's definitely more of a case to keep him um, as, an, as a quick and easy option. But if Matty stays, I think there are something definitely better that you can get there than him. Yeah, well, you just got to look at what you said before, Will Samari. They wanted to pay 40-odd yeah. million for Samari, so that tells you everything about Nabil Bentner. He was second choice, and he might even be fourth choice centre midfield partner at the minute at Newcastle, so who knows about Nabil Bentner. But more of those goals, that would be lovely. Even saw Joe Linton score as well. I know it's only two yards, <laughs> but at least he scored. Did you watch um, that? Right. Oh, it was defending. Tough Newcastle defending, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's good to see them playing playing football, even if it wasn't an empty St. James. It was good to see that um, the lads playing and have a kick about. So two weeks today, Newcastle take on Sheffield United. Uh, two o'clock kickoff. We'll have all the build up to that in the next couple of weeks and all the reaction from hopefully Newcastle winning. That'd be great. Um, Andy Carroll, Javier Manquillo and Rob Elliott is what we're talking about next. They're all still at Newcastle. Um Shall we give all three of them uh, a contract extension until whenever the end of the season will be? You'd like to think an extra month. You'd probably have them on a deal until the 2nd of August, just in case Newcastle miraculously get past Man City and whoever in the semi-final. Um, we'll We're going to. An- We're going <laughs> to. Well, let's start with Andy Carroll. Um, he hasn't scored, but he has been a bit of a nuisance. He's got a couple of assists for Newcastle so far. Do you think it's probably a good idea just to keep him for another month just so we've got another option if Joe Linton doesn't improve I think it's definitely worth keeping him until the end of this season comes because there's no point letting him go I think with Joe Linton you know hasn't hit form ever in his year with Newcastle um it's a really good opportunity and Andy Carroll was coming into the team and starting to play a bit more and causing some teams a few problems um, got the assist for Almiron against Crystal Palace, the all-important Almiron goal. But to have had this time to recuperate, get over their injuries, and now they go again, 
you know, this could be his last chance, really, to, to play in the Premier League. And there's, there's a lot of promise for Andy Carroll. And I always said at the start of the season, if he scored one winning goal this year, he's probably worth to keep for another year. Because uh, he does give you something different and he's a different option up top. And the striking options at Newcastle are, are so lacking. I don't think there's any point in, in not at least renewing his contract until the end of this season. Whether it's for next season is another matter entirely. And, you know, I don't need to say again, takeover pending um, probably plays a big factor in that. But I think certainly for Andy Carroll, there's definitely a lot I'm intrigued to see over the next um, over the next few weeks to see how he does. Yeah, for sure. Um, Paul, Andy Carroll, we know what he can do. Will's talked about and brilliantly about the fact that he is a different option and not many clubs have that option of an Andy Carroll. But it's injuries and it has been throughout his whole career at Newcastle. Well, for after he left Newcastle, really, and went to Liverpool, just it hasn't really materialised uh, materialized for him at Liverpool, at West Ham and to an extent at Newcastle again. Is it, we'll give you one more month, but that's going to be it, I'm afraid. Yeah, because at the end of the day, uh, even as the, the you know the footballers, they know that they can't go anywhere else because of the situation that's that's happening. So I think a month's extension for everybody is the smart thing to do. See the season out, uh, but when you consider, I mean, Carroll he played well against Sheffield United. If you remember down at Bramall Lane, oh, what um, a game. yeah, it, which was absolutely fantastic, and obviously it nicely feeds into our next uh, picture. We've got to do the double over South Yorkshire. You know why? Um, my connections and stuff down there I've got to do that um, again like I say he offers something different but he also offers something same for the uh, physio and that is a lot of work to me see this season out then thank you very much and I can see him dropping down the old football pyramid and maybe going to a, a championship club maybe a Nottingham Forest somebody like that who knows eh? what about Middlesbrough <sighs> <laughs> He's not going to Come on. Come on, lad. It's all going uh, in there. I know. Paul, continue with Javier Mankio. Is it, is it, again, just keep him there for the sake of having numbers? Or do you think he's actually the best right back of the club at the minute? Well, I've just had a little bit of humble pie before I came on. Um, and he's one of them players who's definitely proven a lot of people wrong. I think he's our best right back at the club at the moment. His crossings come on. His defendants come on. Um, he has been a good part of what has been a pretty solid, certainly for a bottom half Premier League club, uh, like defender. So I would again be looking to try and keep him. Uh, Yedlin would be the one uh, who, to me, if I was in charge of the team, would be worried because I think Yedlin has gone back quite a bit recently uh, and he's regressed. And I think he needs a move just to sort of reignite his career and everything. Uh, but I think Mankio, on, on the other hand, you've got to give him credit. I'll criticise where they need to criticise, but I'll give praise and credit where it needs to as well. He has stepped his game up. I remember going to a game against Wolves where he was abysmal and he lost his runners completely and he stopped running back. He wasn't tackling. But he's come on leaps and bounds this season. Um, and I don't know, with Bruce being a defender, as he had, had a few whispers in his ears, I don't know. But he definitely has had a good season. Will, similarly, um, Mankio has never really been my top player. I've never really fancied him. I'll be brutally honest, he has had a couple of good games for Newcastle. But for me, is he any better than Yedlin? Marginally, is he any better than, I don't know, someone that could do it? Like Isaac Hayden? Could Isaac Hayden do a better job at right back? I think probably. So is it maybe a chance now for these potential new owners, if they come in, to go, look, Mankio, you're not good enough. Even though you might have had a couple of good games for us or a better season for us, maybe you need to go as well. I think Mankio, like Paul said, I think he's proven a lot of people wrong and he certainly has been the more impressive right back um, that we've had. Um, pickings aren't great. I think Yedlin hasn't come on at all. I think for what we expected, he was so good in the championship um, and he proved, I think he proved himself in his first season back in the Premier League. But after that, he... He's really struggled, I think, to really nail down that place. And I think Mankio, who's you know, when he has been on the side, I think has been the more solid option. Um, Isaac Hayden, I, th I think his arguments. It's one of those positions where, you know, you know, no offense to any of the players, but it, it seems like you're picking the best of a bad bunch there. Um, and it'd be one of the positions 
you know, in the transfer window that you think that has to be strengthened because the options that are currently there aren't good enough. I think if I had to pick between letting go of one and keeping the other, I'd probably let go of Yedlin and keep Mankio. Um, and I think Mankio would probably accept being um, the player behind a better right back coming into the side. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, like I said, best of a bad bunch, but I'd probably keep him. Uh, Johnny, I tell you what, I could listen to Will. He talks common sense. Common sense on Newcastle. Time and time again, I've been I've been looking forward to this all day. Most common I want, sense. I want, I want, I want to, <laughs> Paul, I want to know who you don't think doesn't speak sense on this channel. <laughs> it, it, it depends what we're talking about, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Has to, that, I, it definitely. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take uh, hairdressing advice of Lee Lawler, for example. You know what I'm saying? I had advice. I'm, I'm saying, not saying... Like, I'm not saying anything because he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's the one that's in charge. I feel like I've been missed here. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, been missed, not... Yeah, well, to be fair, well, it was just over a year ago that you put in a good performance when we beat Borough Fan TV, so... Yes, exactly. Yeah, I'm actually just quite, over a year quite ago. disappointed that that couldn't happen. This year. <laughs> 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 I'm really forward to it. Talking about good servants, Rob Elliott. Um, good servant for Newcastle, yeah. but... Will, one more month, and again, thanks very much for that's just new. Probably. Um, I think the only argument to keep Rob Elliott is for him to be the third-choice goalkeeper, Sal Darlow, and keep Woodman. Um, and he'd probably accept that a bit more rather than if you kept Woodman and Darlow. That, um... <laughs> <laughs> Lord, <laughs> um, yeah, 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 <laughs> rather if he kept Darlow he probably wouldn't accept being the third choice keeper so I think that's the only argument you really could say but Elliot I think again when he's been called upon I think he's actually done a pretty good job if um, you remember in the 15-16 se season he was the best of the keepers I think we had that year um, when we went down and Rafa was keen to put him back into the fold once he could um, and when we got promoted into the Premier League he held the number one jersey for a while so again I think good servant and he's done well when he's played, but uh, yeah, it probably is time for, for him to move on now. But um, you know, all credit to him. I think he's been very good for us. Yeah, definitely someone that you'd you'd appreciate for the stuff that he's done for the club. Uh, final chance to get your WhatsApps, and we're going to touch about one more thing, and then we're going to get on the WhatsApps. It's oh seven four seven six four nine seven one double six. And Paul, <laughs> we're going to talk about Jenny, Jamie Sterry and Jack Colback to fa finish off. Not music. Uh, black and white, black not music. Shirt. Not music. No, no, we're not going to talk about Girls Aloud or S Club 7. <laughs> to be honest with you, I think if, 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 if me and Will were on this like music, I think it would be something like Oasis or something, like, maybe on the Manchester scene, something oh, like that, you. Stone Roses, something like that. Uh, the the, the yeah. thing is, Johnny, <laughs> I, I, I know for a certain fact you've sung along to some right good pop music on the way back home on uh, some away day. So do not deny, look at him backtracking. <laughs> He's backtracking faster than a politician. See that reversing <laughs> sound going off? Goodness me. I'll, I'll, I'm, all, I'm saying, all I'm saying, there's no evidence of this. There's no proof of this. And yeah, <laughs> girls are loud enough said. All I'm saying on the matter. <laughs> you guys are um, on you you all the time. The one time you lot are not recording. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I don't normally exactly. Big brother on this channel. Everything gets recorded. Exactly. We'll we'll leave Please that one for an, we'll leave that one on NFTV Extra. That's a that's a that's a good channel. That's a good channel, by the way. Uh, Jamie Sterry. Yes, exactly. Jamie Sterry and Jack Colback will start with the fact that both have been told to stay away from the training ground because it's unlikely that they're going to be involved and that they're going to be released anyway. So it probably makes sense, especially with everything that's going on coronavirus. Um, obviously, trying not to contact it and obviously stop other people in the club contacting it as well. Um, Jamie Sterry. He's had the odd chance, Will, but just I don't just not good enough really. Because if you look at the right back options we've got, we've, we've talked in great detail about Mankio and Yedlin, and that was probably a fantastic opportunity for Jamie Sterry to go. Well, I'm here. Do you want to give me a look? And he ha he's never really had a look in, has he? Yeah, I think with with, Jay, with Jamie Sterry, when ever he's gone on a loan spell there's always been a problem if I remember correctly like he's never gone to I don't think he's actually gone to a league one club let alone a championship club and then being expected to play in the Premier League I don't think it's been it just benched, hasn't been sorry what was that he's been every time he's gone on loan to league one he's been benched mainly 
Yeah, he's maybe on the bench where he's cut, it's been cut short after a month. It kind of reminds me of Cal Roberts, who, you know, I think on mm. the two occasions he did play for Newcastle, actually did quite well. But whenever he went out on loan, he can never, you know, seal down a place, could never really find a home. Um, so it, it doesn't really say someone who's ready to be thrust into the Premier League. So, uh, yeah, I think it's it's time for, for him to move on and to you know, start his career because he's getting to that age now where he really does have to start getting games under his belt and start playing because otherwise he'll find himself out in the wilderness. So, you know, best of luck to him. I think he's done as good as he can, um, but I think it's time to find a home at a League One club somewhere. Yeah, League One is a very difficult division, by the way. So it's, it, it'll be it, it is, good I've if been watching it all year. It is, I've been watching it all year. It's a division, you know. I yeah, know, definitely. Yeah. Um, Paul, I'm going to let you talk about Jack Colback. Um, came in oh, from... Came from the A19, obviously, with Sunderland. And obviously, the first two seasons, maybe even the first three seasons, he was inconsistent, but he, he did enough to kind of keep his place in the team. And then whatever happened in that... Well, he, well when, you look at, when, you, when you look at the options that he had, though, Paul, like he was keeping the likes of, you know, why not? Like, Wijnaldum was partnering at, at times at centre midfield, which when you look at Wijnaldum now, he's playing with the likes of Fabinho. And you just think, how did how did Colback get games? But that's another argument. The championship is to do better. Of them. I know he wanted eleven Jack Colbacks <laughs> after that Leicester after that Leicester game, wasn't it? But in well, the, that should have got your P forty five straight away. Yeah, definitely. Eleven but Jack Colbacks, also... goodness me! <laughs> well, he's, he's the best coach in the world, anyway. Or the best coach in the Premier League, Paul. But um, in, in all seriousness, <laughs> with Jack with Jack Colback, he got a regular amount of games in the Championship as well and you would have thought he was going to get another chance in the Premier League but big, big argument with Benitez over something and he's never had a look in since and he hasn't really recovered. He's obviously had a couple of spells at U Reds Forest um, but it, that's, the Championship is probably his level at best, isn't it? He's not going to be, re- he's not going to be remembered as a, a great player at Newcastle by any stretch, Paul. No, I mean, I find it funny that they've said don't come to the training ground during this uh, stepping up to training. He shouldn't have been at the training ground full stop. He's been useless all season. And they sent him home ages ago, going around the schools, coach the kids, do something else. Please don't come in anywhere near the first team training because you might pass on some of your terrible habits. I'm sorry, he's never been he's never been that good, has he? Uh, the old adage about the best part of him and where it may have dribbled to comes perfectly in for Jack Colback. Um, again... To me, if you're good enough, I'll say you're good enough. If you're not, I don't care whether you're from anyone. I don't care whether you were born on the centre circle at St James's Park. If you're not good enough, you're not good enough. And Sterry and Colbeck, unfortunately, fall into this category. Sterry looks like a League Two standard player. I've watched some League One football when I used to live down Barnsley. I saw quite a bit from the League One standard. And he's probably slightly below that, to be fair. Um, But, oh... Just falls into the category of not good enough and also falls into the category of who was stupid enough to give him a 45 grand a week contract in the first place. Uh, it just yeah. makes the Matty Longstaff uh, debate even more absolutely farcical. Uh, Jamie Sterry, from what I've heard of Kyle and people who know the lad, he's a lovely lad, great, but unfortunately, lovely lad, doesn't score your goals and take goals and make assists and stuff. He's just never been good enough. We've lost far better players than these two combined sadly. But so see, yeah. see you later, Jack Colback. If you need help relocating somewhere else, give us a call. I'll do it free of charge. That's not a problem. We'll get help get, help get you shifted. Yeah, definitely. From the, from the uh, Ginger Perlo to the Salted Perlo. Um, Lee, we'll get you we'll get the WhatsApp comments in one minute, but to the Salted Perlo, Will, I just want to get your thoughts on everything in terms of Newcastle takeover because obviously we don't. This is the first time we've got you on the channel for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think? Do you think this is going to happen? Do you think that Newcastle can move on from Mike Ashley? And do you also think that Newcastle can now improve and compete and not be a laughing stock? Um, th- th- I've, honestly, I've been wait. I've been waiting to say something about this takeover for ages. Um, it's, I mean, when this first broke in January, I didn't think it was true. Um, and then once it's come back on, it was apparent that something was happening. You know, it's, it always, um, you know, makes you feel a little bit excited, but of course there's so much speculation going on around this. I'm not that surprised it's taken this long. Um, 
it's fair to say the Premier League have got a lot on their plate at the minute um, because whoever you know whoever would be dealing with this takeover has also been dealing with Project Restart, and there is so much opposition to this bid more than I've ever seen any bid before um, that they can't be seen to just have taken this very very lightly. I think this needed to take a lot of consideration. Um, what you think about that is is down to your own personal opinion, but the you know for the Premier League they can't just have been seen to have not considered everything about it, and there's so much going on um, around this bid and there's so much contention. My personal gut feeling is that this will happen. I think if it doesn't happen, I don't know when it can because they've never gotten this far. Everybody said yes. All the parties have agreed. They're all just waiting on the word of the Premier League. Um, will Newcastle have a good future under it? That remains to be seen. It remains to be seen how far they want to take this um, because of financial fair play, this is going to be a much longer project than the Man City one. This could take a decade to get anywhere near being a consistent Champions League football club. But it does, but it would give Newcastle a more ambitious owner, an owner that would want to take the club forward to make the best of it. And that is far more valuable than any concrete trophy success for Newcastle fans. As much as you want a trophy, just to be ambitious, just to show that you want to do it and not just to survive every year at the highest level and taking as much money as you can is far more valuable than anything could ever be because it's it's just caring I think that's what people don't really understand. I think a lot of people have been very quick to judge Newcastle fans for their position on the takeover in relation to Saudi Arabia. But to have endured 13 years of the club being where it is and to have seen it gone from what it used to be down to where it is, it's like someone taking over Spurs now and them getting relegated twice to the championship in 10 years. It's a dramatic fall. And for just someone to come in and just show it the appreciation and the care for it and to show that they want to do as best as they can is it's going to be a big change. And I think Newcastle will have a much better future under a new ownership, whoever that may be. And I think finally, if this takeover does get rejected, there's been a lot of speculation that there are people waiting in the wings. So I think whatever happens with this particular takeover bid, I don't think Mike Ashley will be the Newcastle owner for much longer. Hopefully not. Well said, Will. Well said. Uh, but let's hope. That's, let's hope. That's, all, that's, all we, that's all we can do. Uh, Paul, I'll let you start with the first WhatsApp. Thank you for all your WhatsApps. Uh, Gary is very very on a similar theme as Will about the takeover. Paul, briefly, do you think that if Newcastle can get taken over, they can be successful? That's I think that's what Gary's trying to point out there. Yeah, of, of course we can. Uh, like Will said, he summed it up absolutely perfectly. What we want is just a few common sense decisions to be made. And somebody who actually gives a damn, who, who might be thinking a season or two in advance and not thinking, oh, I need £30 million back uh, because I'm going to be buying Debenhams or I'm going to be buying some other tax shop about, you know, off the high street. You know, somebody who's going to put Newcastle first and look to make a bit of a mark. Um, and I honestly think with sensible investment, a bit of heart and determination, you'll get the fans back on side. The, the atmospheres are going to be better. The feel of the club's going to be better. You know, I haven't been in the club shop in I don't know how many years, stuff like that. There's many of us in the same boat. Yes, we can be successful. Most definitely, we can be successful. I mean, I lived through the Keegan stuff, remember it well, and we were literally within, well, an answer you know what, of touching the Premier League then. But certainly cup competitions and stuff like that and having a cup policy and, and reaching for the stars. That's just what we want. Just want to dream. A little bit of hope. It's not too much to ask. Yeah, definitely. Uh, William from Belfast has great video, Paul, in the week about Mighty Longstaff, which I can only agree with. Uh, there must be a reason why Spurs sold Rose. Will, we've kind of talked about that already, but mm-hmm. Spurs just want to get rid of him quickly, don't they? Yeah, definitely. They, they Jose doesn't seem too keen on him, so I'm wanting to get rid. If he doesn't come to Newcastle, he'll go somewhere else. Swapping for the <laughs> to for Lazar. Uh, John says let's uh, let's say the takeover happens and get a big name like Bale who is on big money do you think other players at the club will want a better contract if say a Bale was to come in 
Uh, well, I'll let you have this one because I know you've already spoke about Danny Rose. Um, Bale, I don't think is coming. And, you know, however much money this takeover is, I don't think Gareth Bale will be a Newcastle player next season. I think in terms of big name players, I don't actually think some of the names being that I'd rather like Cavani and Coutinho, I don't think they're realistic at all. I think it's a, you know, it's a, it's going to be a process. It's going to be a build um, that's going to take a few years. So I think big name players, they're not going to happen for a few years. I think it will just be progressive upgrades because just buying one big player doesn't fix everything. You know, we know this and, you know, we've had players at this club in the same team. You know, you had Sissoko and Wijnaldum, two of them just recently playing, playing the last Champions League final. You know, the club still went down. So they, um, just having a plan <laughs> more than anything and having a plan, a recruitment plan and a footballing philosophy going forward is going to be what you've had. You know, you take, take Ajax, for example, they, they were one second away from getting into a Champions League final and they had Tadic, who was at, Southampton and players that we'd never heard of put them together into one of the best footballing teams I've seen so you know it, it doesn't always mean big money and big money doesn't fix everything it doesn't oh, really? for sure I'll tell you what it's almost as if Will there you'd read my article that I put on NewcastleFansTV.com <laughs> about the Georgie DNA and copying the Ajax model and also the uh, article I did on ASM and signing those types of exciting young players and the funny, yeah, thing is, the funny thing is, Paul, I didn't read that article, so it must be just great minds think alike. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh, I thought I thought it, I thought it might be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next, the next lot is that leave callback alone. He, in my opinion, is better than Perlo. Uh, Premier League, Premier League, Premier League. Be project restart. Project there. restart. Uh, how many people work at the FA? I think it's more of a Premier League thing than an FA thing in regards to this takeover, which yeah. the FA don't really have an involvement in. Uh, let's have a look. There's a couple of players that uh, Eze is a talent. I think, does he play for QPR? Eze? Yeah, a bit of Eze is a lot. Yeah. Of Should snap him up ASAP, a bit like Deli Ali was back in the day. Um, Will, you would have probably seen more football league games. Is, is he a player that we should watch out for? Um, he's stand, standing out in a um, fairly substandard QPR team. Um, really sort of exciting number 10 kind of player. Um, sort of really fast, good with his feet. Has got has proven a real attacking threat. And I think there's a lot of Premier League clubs sniffing around. I think Newcastle are probably one of the front runners for him. West Ham, I think, have been linked with him as well. well I think he's got a great haircut. Yeah. yeah. You can just imagine the chant, can't you? Easy, easy, easy. No, we'll leave it <laughs> Um, is there any update on the Premier League yet on this takeover or is it looking like another false story? Very, very briefly, Paul, do you think they're just delaying it because the project restart was the, the big thing on trying to restart the season? Yes, but also I've said uh, on uh, our Facebook page repeatedly, it's all about PR and spin and looking white and then white. Money will talk in the end and it will see it over the line. They'll come to a deal, they'll come to an arrangement um, they want the best players in the Premier League in the Premier League. That is going to need money. Money is no problem to these uh, Saudi investors. So look for it to be eventually done. It's, I don't think it's a case of will it get done. I just think it's a case of when it will get done. I do just want exactly. to say quite quickly, um, a lot of people's contention with Saudi, or Saudi Arabia has been with the human rights stuff going on over there. I don't think it fixes anything if we as a country trying to be on this high horse of saying that we're more accepting that um, if we don't, that if this bid doesn't get accepted, I don't think it fixes anything. And uh, I think the, the next thing we'll hear on the takeover that's official is it, is it actually happening or if it's not happening? I think anything else is just speculation. Yeah. Yeah. I think everything's speculation until there's any confirmation for sure. Uh, last couple of WhatsApps, like two left. I can say about salary caps. I think we'd have to have, have our own show on salary caps. I, I just oh. don't think it would, I don't think, I don't think it would happen. Um, the next one, Fulham fan. Uh, Fulham fan from West London, why do you think uh, you're entitled to compete at the very top? I don't think we're asking to compete at the very top. I think I'm going to answer this one. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we're entitled to compete at the very top. But what I think we are entitled to is to try and be better and to try and, and try and improve. We're not, we're not happy with what we're having at the minute, which is can we finish 17th? Because that's all we're, that my ash is into. Um, I think it's, if, it, if it was your club, I'm not saying Fulham are a bigger club than Newcastle because they're not, in my opinion. I'm sure the other two lads would agree. But it's just, 
we we think we're a li- not unique, but we think we can do a lot better. That's just I think the the general census of it all. Um, just for you, th- well said, Johnny. And, uh, mm. Do you think ASM can fulfil his potential with Newcastle? Finally, will I think so? I think the, what I've seen from ASM is he strikes me as someone very similar to Adama Traore, who in his first couple of seasons at Middlesbrough and um, with the Wolves as well wasn't sort of showed promise but didn't sort of have the end product but it eventually did come and I think with uh, better players and with a system more built around something that will uh, suit him a bit better I think he will shine through I think he's got a lot of talents Yeah I, I think we can get the best ASM out of the next 9 or 10 games I think we we'll might if we don't get a Tego it might be a struggle to keep a hold of them but who knows who knows uh, Jonathan Yeo has gone along the Scots Road to see the Crown Prince Salmon Hopefully, hopefully one day. And all the articles that if you want to read on Newcastle Fans TV, on NewcastleFansTV.com, which Paul's and articles, Rob, Sam, Kyle, everybody bar me, basically. So there you go. I'm digging myself out a little bit there. Um, <laughs> yeah. A big a big thank you to Paul. Paul, thank you very much to be on the show. Oh, you're welcome. Nice to see Will back um, on as well. Thank you very much. Nice of course it is. Hopefully and Will, we'll see you at some point. Thank you very much for being back on. Yeah, good to see you guys. I hope I hope it's not quite as long until I'm back on again. <laughs> Can we get you on for hashtag cans? I mean, the ice has melted, not going to lie. <laughs> I put them on ice quite a while ago, but I think the ice has melted. We'll wait and see. Hopefully, um, if the takeover doesn't take too long, I should hopefully be able to make a reappearance. Get on to be a 52, Will. Be a 52. Yeah, be a 52. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is... This is the end of the Black and White Show. Big thanks to everyone that's been on today, to Sam, to Kyle, to Rob, and to Lee, who's behind the scenes as well. Again, a big thanks to Paul and to Will. I'm going to try and run away from all the Fulham fans that are going to give me grief. Uh, We'll see you next week here on the Black and White Show. The Black and White Show will be with you after this short break. See you in a few minutes. Today, we're going to talk about Amazon. We have our very own Amazon store in which you can find pretty much anything to do with Newcastle United, from shirts to pencil cases to anything you want. Lee, what have you bought from our Amazon store? Oh, I love a good pencil case and duvet, don't I? As that's been around the internet before. No, I've I've got a lot of stuff, uh, not just Newcastle stuff. I've also got a lot of tech stuff that we use, like cameras and mics from Amazon. So they do a lot of stuff on our Amazon store. But I'd probably say that my favourite is the shirt because we do a lot more range but you can get anything. You can get literally anything from a pen to a bottle of vodka to bed sheets. You name it, Amazon has it all. Yeah, Amazon is great for its range of products. And the best part is, is that we aren't giving anything to Mike Ashley and Sports Direct. Nothing Sports Direct related, related on that store. Sam, how brilliant is that? Purchasing Newcastle memorabilia, 100% guilt free. Mm-hmm. That man is not receiving any of your money for you, your purchases on our Amazon store. I myself love the memorabilia section. I don't know about you boys, but classic shirts uh, from years gone by, signed, signed, signed photos of Newcastle legends. Alan Shearer, Shea Given, Les Ferdinand. They're all on here, all on our Amazon store. It's a cracking, cracking, cracking find. That's just reminded. That's just reminded me, Sam, because I actually like car accessories as well. So I've got a lot of fresheners in my car, which are Newcastle United. I literally, my car is kitted out. Don't tell me you can get a Newcastle United car air freshener from our Amazon store. Yeah, not oh, yes, you can. Several, Sam. There's loads there. So if you want your car looking nice, you're supporting Newcastle United. Just be careful where you park your car. But apart from that, it's fantastic. Get all them accessories. Yeah, so fantastic. If you want anything, pretty much anything Newcastle United related, check out our Amazon store. Link will be in the description below. Go have yourself a gander and you might find yourself a good bargain. Welcome back to the Black and White Show with Newcastle Fans TV.